Good evening. I'd like to call this meeting of the uh, Planning and Zoning uh, Commission to order. It's our Wednesday, October 14th, uh, 2020 meeting. Could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic And at this time, I'd like just to introduce the uh, members of the uh, commission that are here this evening, as well as staff to my far right as commission member. Jeff Cohen. Next to uh, Jeff is James Fitzsimmons, also a commission, also a commission member. To my immediate left is Steve Allenson, an alternate on the commission, and then also to Steve's left is Jamie Hine, also an uh, alternate. At our table, lower table to my left is Cheryl Ann Tubby, who's our recording secretary, and at the lower table to the uh, right is uh, Thomas Talbot, who's our acting town planner. Before I get to any items on our agenda, I'd like to just go over some uh, directions that the various boards and commissions have been given to us by our corporate council concerning the conducting, conducting, the way I should conduct a meeting. Uh, these are revised uh, boards and commissions meeting protocol. It says in conjunction with Stephen Civitelli, the town's health director, the following protocol should be used for in-person meetings. One, all attendees, board members, and public shall wear a mask, and the shall means a must. Only uh, persons who have written authorization from a medical provider, which must be available for inspection, exempting them from wearing a mask, are allowed not to wear a mask. Any person, author, uh, any person authorized not to wear a mask must remain at least six feet from every other person. In-person refusals to wear a mask or follow instructions, direct them to leave the meeting. If they refuse, call the police. Two, practice six feet of social distancing. Board members should consider changing the seating arrangement to uh, provide that distancing. If you change the seating arrangement, make sure the members speak into the microphone. They need not be on camera. They, however, must be part of the recording. Then we have touchless hand sanitizer devices are located throughout the building for public use. We also have uh, those items on the table for people making presentations. The attendees should be reminded of the mask requirement, advise individuals to distance themselves six feet from all other attendees. Attendees residing within the same household, however, are not required provide social distancing. For your information, the ventilation system has been maximized to increase circulation for outdoor air in the town hall. As of March 18, 2020, there are increased cleaning throughout the building focusing on high touch surfaces. The health department is continually monitoring the pandemic as it relates to community and county case levels. You will be advised of any changes to the guidance provided herein. Chairperson should consult with staff regarding the upcoming agenda and the expected turnout by the public. While no one can know for sure how many people will attend, you should have a general idea. If there are concerns that a large number of people may attend, staff should look into moving the meeting to a larger location. This should be addressed prior to posting the meeting. Generally, town council chambers have been more than adequate to accommodate the public. If the chairperson has any questions, reach out to your staff, the health department, Stephen Civitelli, or corporate counsel, Janice Small. And this is from the health department and the law department. As I mentioned uh, uh, earlier before I uh, started the meeting, uh, the, the social distancing uh, per our, uh, uh, our, our health director is in this auditorium. It's Six feet apart, six feet is defined by our health uh, director as three seats between each individual. So if you're not a family member, three seats between you. It's also defined as two rows between rows. So as an example, row one, if there are people sitting there, row two and three, no one should be sitting there. Uh, so that's how we define social distancing. So I hate to be a hall monitor here, but I think the gentleman who's right in front of me in the gray sweater, uh, you are 
we have some issues. If you'd like to, sir, maybe go to the, front, uh, the first row, if you would, sir, or choose another row, just so we are able to maintain the social distancing. And it's the same thing with the gentleman who just moved. I'm not sure, sir, if there's two rows between you and the gentleman in front of you. Again, I appreciate everybody's cooperation because I really don't want to be the hall monitor. We'll wait, no problem. Good. All right. Well, uh, just as a general announcement, some items that will or not be heard this evening. Two items uh, by requested by request rather of the uh, of the applicant are, are not going to be heard this evening. The first is a, a special permit uh, for fill and excavation for Pfizer at 21 Tully's Road. There's no action requested on that one by the applicant. The next one is item number five, which is a site plan. It's a multi-family uh, conversion for uh, Ostro uh, Ostrovsky. I apologize if I'm pronouncing the gentleman's name incorrectly. But also with that, there's some additional work that the gentleman needs to do on, uh, on that application. So that brings us to first item is approving the minutes of our September 14th, 2020 meeting. At this point in time, I'd ask if there's any commission members that have any uh, corrections, additions to the minutes. If none, I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Mr. Fitzsimmons. Mr. Chairman, I move that we approve the minutes of the September 14, 2020 meeting has um, provided. We have a, a motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Cohan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstains? Good. Moving on. The uh, next item on agenda that we're going to be taking up is a special permit public parking uh, area, Town of Wallingford Engineering Department, 33. North Cherry Street. Again, if the applicant would please come forward to begin preparing for a presentation. And I'm going to ask Mr. Allison uh, if he would uh, note all correspondence for the record. And read, if you would, sir, please read the note, uh, legal notice first. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Number 410 20, special permit for a 128 space public parking lot for the town of Wallingford on 1.31 acres located at 33 North Cherry Street, 120 Hall Avenue, and 87 Quinnipiac Street, Zone TC. We have a interdepartmental inter referral from our fire marshal dated 9-15-20. We have an interdepartmental referral from our environmental planner dated 9-30-20. We have an email dated October 12th, 2020, from Gina Morgenstein, Councilwoman. We have an email dated 10-13-20 from Tara Corvine. I apologize if I pronounced that incorrectly. We have an email dated October 14th, I'm sorry, dated 10-13-20 uh, uh, from Ben Martin. And I believe that concludes the uh, documents. Thank you, Mr. Allison. If the applicant would please enter, introduce herself and begin her presentation. Sure. Allison Kapuscinski, town engineer. There's the uh, uh, Allison right by the uh, wipes. Allison Kapuscinski, town engineer. Is it okay if I stand over here? Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. So I'm here today seeking a special permit approval for a parking lot that fronts Quinnipiac Street, North Cherry Street, and Hall Avenue, which is also Connecticut Route 150. The proposed parking lot is 128 spaces. The existing lot, if you don't mind me pointing, um, is the section that connects Hall Avenue to Quinnipiac Street and also this section near Quinnipiac Street and North Cherry Street. Today, the modification to the site plan is including parking in this northwest portion of the lot. The site is, or is made up of three different parcels. 
We're proposing to repave the entire lot and also reconfigure it as well. Part of the reconfiguration includes eliminating a curb cut on 150 over here. And that's really to allow more queuing length at the traffic light. And also there's just, in my opinion, no need for two different entrances and exits on that side of the parcel. Also, previously we have eliminated the driveway curb cut on North Cherry Street towards Hall Ave. And that was done through um, curb replacement recently. We are proposing to maintain the existing driveway mid block. And also in this top northeast corner, we're narrowing that driveway because right now it's about 50 feet wide and we're narrowing it to about 26 feet. So the landscaping that we're proposing is um, a Shenandoah switchgrass around the portions of the lot that go along the train station, um, the railroad tracks. Um, that was done to kind of have a uniform look for people on the train that are looking at this lot because that's a very I think a prominent way to see this, this piece of property. Elsewhere, we have landscaping beds that are um, consisting of fountain grass. And then we also have several trees proposed as well. We have some ornamentals along the parking lot over here, and then we have some red maples to kind of mimic street trees along the right of ways. We also have the screening shrubs per the zoning regulations. And that's wherever we have parking spaces that do front a public right of way. We're proposing to replace the bituminous sidewalk that runs along the um, train tracks, which is separated by the train tracks uh, by a block picket fence. That same fence currently hides a welcome to Wallingford wooden sign. And that sign is, we're proposing that it gets relocated to this corner, this intersection of Hall Ave and North Cherry Street. The idea behind this, this sign, I think it's a little, I think it's kind of cool. Um, we're going to be kitty cornering that and then proposing a perennial plant bed. And then also having um, a trio of river birch behind it. And that's really to give you um, a good welcome to the, the town center of Wallingford when you come from either the west side of town or the parkway. So I think that covers the site. And then as far as storm drainage goes, we're maintaining the existing catch basins. And we're also proposing two new ones <coughs> in this section of the site, and that's just due to existing grades. Um, we are reducing impervious by 8.6%, which does exceed our MS4 goal of a 2% reduction in impervious co uh, coverage. Um, we are submitting a, uh, we have submitted for an encroachment permit from the DOT, and that's due to some minor work along Hull Avenue and also the stormwater does tie into the state system over here, so they'll be reviewing that as well. The utility work that we have proposed um, consists of relocating an existing utility pole that right, is right around this existing, uh, or this proposed parking, and we're proposing to relocate it uh, behind these buildings in this striped area. Um, besides that, we are proposing some lighting. We have pedestrian lighting, the period lighting that we have throughout the downtown. We're proposing that along this pedestrian walkway and also several parking lot fixtures that will have a concrete base. Uh, the soil erosion for the site, uh, we are proposing inlet protection uh, in all inlets on site and also anything downstream along the right of ways. I think with that, I will open up for any questions. Thank you. Any commission members with uh, questions for the applicant? Mr. Simmons. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you for your presentation. I just have a, a question. Was I looked at the plan and, and very familiar with the lot. So you're proposing 128 parking spaces. How many of them are handicapped? Five of them are handicapped. Okay. And I noticed if I see the handicapped are just along the railroad track side, right? So there's, there's two here, two, two here and one over by North Cherry to kind of spread it out a bit. Okay. Um, the two white <coughs> sections, which are, one is the pizza parlor and yep. one is the uh, liquor store package store. Okay. Where are their dumpsters on, on that plan? Their dumpsters, they have some space right here that's not building. That's theirs. That's theirs and we're not proposing any parking along it so they can still access it from the drive aisle. Okay. 
And I guess the same question for the um, barbershop and the vacuum store. Yeah, so it, it is, I apologize for the quality of the print, right. little light. There is a large space back here that is just pavement. And also alongside here, there's also pavement. So really, there's quite a bit of parcel that's not taken up by building in that corner. So they do have current access to the back of the building from a driveway here. I am proposing to narrow that kind of as a, a courtesy because they've been using that driveway. We don't want to completely restrict their access there. So we want to make sure that works out for them. But we're trying to encourage people to use the central mid block mm -hmm. entrance. Um, so yeah, so they'll still be able to get back here. I think, uh, I think this is the, the vac shop and they just pull right in here and park there right. a lot of times when they're loading. I, the reason I ask, if I'm gonna go back to the handicap, the reason I ask is because those four businesses have had the use of that parking, but the handicap spaces don't help them, so to speak. So is there a chance you could either add handicapped or relocate the handicap into that center section? So people who would visit either the barbershop, the vacuum cleaner store, the, the pizza place, or the liquor would have better cool. access. My understanding is very familiar. Those four businesses don't have any of their own parking, correct? Correct. So they... They're heavy users of this particular yes. lot. Okay. Um, so, and then just for the record, so no dumpsters for private businesses would be located on this property. Correct. It all has to be on their own property. Correct. Okay. The other, the other question, did you receive all the correspondence that was acknowledged in the record? I did. Okay. So we received three letters, um, all suggesting, um, one suggested that we, uh, have it as leave it as developable space, you know, for multi-level retail or housing. Another one said something truly useful for Wallingford instead of another parking lot. And the other letter uh, talks about the, the the challenges. Did the town engineering office look at other uses of this lot? Um, I personally did not. I did just start in December. I do know that Tim Ryan is here tonight, and I mm -hmm. believe he's planning to talk during the public hearing. Um, and he has the full history of of what's been looked at for the site and why the parking lot was decided as the best option right now. Okay. And the total, I apologize because I, I don't have my map with front of me. How many total number of lights would be in this in this light, lot? So lights? Lights. 11. Okay. And they all would be the period type that we have downtown already? No, only four of those will be the period type lighting. Oh. The others are parking lot lights. Um, so we are working with a, a lighting rep, but it's going to be something sleek that wouldn't take away from the, the nature of the period lighting. And the full cutoff. Correct. Okay. All right. I, I have nothing further. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. Other commission members? Yes. Mr. Hine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I just have a few questions. Uh, why, um, why are you seeking a special permit? So I did meet with Casey Han before she left. Um, there is one spot right here that has 19 feet to the property line. Um, and because that's all we could really take account for for the drive aisle, there is a section of the town center regs that allow you to seek a special permit if you could not be compliant without losing um, several parking spaces. So right now, there's plenty of, of space to maneuver there. You have more than 24 feet, but because it's, it's outside our property line, that's why I'm seeking the special approval, or sorry, special permit. And how many, uh, it, it, just for the record, um, how many uh, spaces would you lose without the special permit? Um, I looked at it before and I believe it would be four spaces. Okay, out of 128 spaces? Correct. It would also create a very odd configuration in this already precarious um, loop, if you will, on Quinnipiac. The, the geometry of that portion of the lot is a bit odd. Yeah, I, yeah, I, you know, I'm just looking at the, at the regulation, and it says um, th that there's, you gotta, there, there's got to be a significant reduction in the number of parking spaces. And you're proposing 128, and you're, and you're saying that you would lose four. So I, I guess how, how I understood it, and I believe that, you know, me and Casey had this understanding during our meeting, that in this section, kind of, so it's, it's a large parking lot, and that is absolutely the truth. The 
goal of it is to serve many different areas of this downtown section. So losing four spaces here for these four businesses, I think would be quite substantial. Yeah. Okay, and, and fair enough. Um, and then uh, uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, uh, to uh, Mr. Talbot, um, I just want to be clear. Uh, the town has a right as the property owner to, to create a parking lot under our regulations, correct? The regulations permit a parking lot in the downtown area, correct? Oh, yeah, I think that's clear in your regulation. Yeah, yeah. And, and I just want that to be clear for the record, um, just because there's, there are letters, um, uh, you know, the three letters that have been submitted um, that uh, uh, assert some objection to this particular project. And um, I want it to be clear that we as a, that, that is not our role as, com as a commission. Uh, this is something that is permitted by our regulations. Would you, would you like a, a site from the regulations? That would be wonderful. I, I think it's 4.26, um, I just had it, um, B11, makes reference to government facilities, buildings, and uses. Yeah. No, I, and I appreciate that. Um, you know, it, it, this, is, um, uh, this is not my uh, favorite project either, but I think if our, uh, my role is to enforce the regulations, and if the regulations permit this, um, then that's, that's what they permit. So, thank you. Any other commission members? Um, I'm, I'm going to save my comments for the, the last second. Oh, okay. All right, if, if, just so I completely understand what the project is, and I believe I do, what you're looking to do, we have a, three parcels, what you're looking to do is essentially uh, not reconstruct, but reconfigure 74% of, 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 of the entire three parcels, which is a parking lot right now, correct? Uh, correct, but also this area. No, 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 I, no I, I understand that. I said oh, that, this portion. That's, that's the first part of this. What you're looking, oh, yes. you're reconstructing of this total project. 74% is reconstruction of an existing parking lot or that's two correct. existing parking lots. And then the other is proposing on a parcel that was purchased by the town, which is about 26% to include that in the parking configuration. I mean, that's... So we're not looking to create a new parking lot of about 1.2, 1.3 acres. We're looking to add about 0.3 acres in parking, correct? Correct. Good. Thank you. Mr. Talbot, would you like to make any comments on the application before I go out to the public? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. Thank you. This is a uh, public hearing. We Certainly, uh, the public always has an opportunity to comment on, uh, on any application. It's a public hearing at this point in time. Are there any members of the public who would like to comment on the application? If you'd please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Good evening, Tim Ryan, uh, representing the Economic Development Commission. Um, I'd just like to let you know that the uh, EDC enthusiastically supports this project. And it, you need to uh, understand the bigger picture. Um, we uh, supported and proposed the town to buy this site when it was the former Brothers Restaurant and raise the building so that we could have additional parking in our town center. Now we've got, um, as part of our POCD, we, we have supported, and you, you folks are well aware, since it's one of your documents, that we are looking to do more mixed-use development in the town center. Um, the former town planner and myself um, worked on a number of different projects that looked at site-specific opportunities, uh, namely the Gallagher property, uh, the now the, the property that um, is uh, just been purchased uh, by the gentleman from North Haven, uh, the uh, Valenti barbershop property, and looking at each of those properties and, and, and going through the exercise of saying if those were to become mixed-use developments, um, would they work and what would it take? And we went into you know, a great amount of detail basically playing situations as, as if we were the developers. And the outcomes of those, in other words, 
we did property acquisition cost, site prep cost, building cost, applied the zoning regulations and said, what could we build there? Uh, we did rent roll, we did cost of long money, we did everything as if we were the developer. And it took three iterations because the first one proved that it would never happen because you could, the density was not sufficient enough to generate enough revenue to support the cost of the project. So you folks in your downtown regulations approved uh, higher levels of density in the lower part of the hill in the uh, incentive housing zone. You approved as higher density means lower parking requirements. And in doing so, higher density means more rent generation on a site so that we could get this to the point where any of these sites could be developed and they would pencil out. I'll add to that that we also have um, and have had conversations over the last year or so about the old railroad station. And this is the first time I'm saying this publicly, um, but we, we feel at the EDC that the railroad station is an absolute gem and at the lower part of our town center. Historically significant building, a beautiful building. However, we feel that it's very underutilized with all due respect to the operation, the adult education that's there now. But that railroad station could be something more for the town center, the lower part of the hill, and it could generate a lot more activity, foot traffic, etc. So if you picture that happening, and we, a railroad station that has no parking whatsoever, we need the additional parking. So fast forward, who knows how long, could be a couple of years easily, but fast forward and say the railroad station now has got a new uh, a new use that is generating a lot of foot traffic and activity. You know, there's, during the POCD, the conversations were, let's make the lower part of the hill as energized and as active as the upper part of the hill. So all these initiatives have gone into doing that. And as a result, uh, we do need more parking. We also have, you know, supported, with your support, we brought to you the, uh, the uh, big project down on Parker Place that now has 300 apartments all walkable to downtown, all right? That doesn't justify more parking, but it, what it does is says we can generate more activity. So the whole idea is to take and look at the, look at the lower part of the hill a little different. If we're gonna add mixed use, which we'd like to add, uh, obviously that's up to property owners and it's up to developers, but we've gotta kinda seed the base so that we can make those projects viable. And having off-site parking in near proximity is critical for for those densities to survive and for that uh, for those projects to make it. Your, your regulations went from one and a half parking spaces per apartment unit down to one. But we recognize that in many cases there may be a second car in any given household and that second car in a household, whether it be again on the property that's on Hall in North Colony, it could be the property that's on Quinnipiac in South Colony, it could be on the property directly across in a parking lot on Quinnipiac Street, any of those projects were to pop and generate more traffic, this parking lot is very walkable to any of those projects. So that's why, I, 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 sorry it took so long to explain that, but it's kind of a bigger picture vision. Uh, we have had conversations with some folks that said that they'd like to see it become more of a, you know, a park, grass, you know, um, there were some, uh, I think, water amenities. I look at it this way and say, if it's a parking lot, and for some reason these development opportunities don't take place, which is always a possibility, you can always turn it into a park. But if it's a park, you're never going to turn it into a parking lot if, if, we, if these other opportunities come forward. So I will leave it at that and just say that again that the EDC enthusiastically supports this application. And I thank Mr. Kapazinski for bringing it forward. Thank, thank you. you, sir. Any other members of the public would like to speak on the application? Seeing none, I would... Uh, for, yes, Mr. Simmons. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just have a, a follow-up question I meant to ask. And I want to make sure I heard correctly. So this lot will be paved? Correct. And striped? Correct. Okay. And what's the timeline of the project? So we are hoping to be able to do this construction this spring. That does depend on a few factors, such as receiving a grant that we have recently applied for and also um, the DPW uh, workload and their availability, but it is our intention to pave it in the spring. And so, uh, help me because you have a big drawing there. The entire area we're looking at will be paved or just the newer portion will be paved? Because you said the beginning is just three lots combining into a single project. 
Correct. Everything that you see that's shaded here will be new pavement. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Simmons. I believe, Mr. Cohan, you wanted to make some, uh, some comments, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, yes. Um, you know, I heard the comments from the public, Mr. Ryan, and I would, sit, I would state that um, using this as a parking lot absolutely positively, in my humble opinion, does not conform to our plan of conservation and development. And I can cite several pages in here that, um, you know, state the reasons why. Um, you know, this parking lot is the end border of our town center. The end of the center wraps right around the, the parking lot or proposed parking lot. And originally when we established the regulations, a, a big part of our discussion was, and you know, Mr. Ryan briefly touched on it, was developers had a problem with acquiring large parcels of, you know, real estate in the town center to make it worth their while to develop something. And that's why the town has not changed in decades. When, you know, this parcel came up and we had to vote, you know, to approve the purchase by the town council, I did vote for them to buy it because, you know, thinking long term, uh, this would be a good start to acquire a prime piece of real estate where, you know, the town has it, you know, maybe they can now buy, a developer can now buy, you know, an adjacent parcel somewhere and, and do the changes that, you know, we all want. And, you know, that's exactly what the POCD states. Um, you know, when, when that vote came, you know, like I said, I did vote for it, but I also added I do not want to see a parking lot here. Um, you know, a lot of times uh, EDC will come in and say that, um, you know, a development is going to add to the tax rolls. Well, you know, and that's not something we can consider, but um, having a parking lot there takes us right off the tax rolls of the town. Um, you know, Mr. Ryan talked about the train station. Be great if, you know, we could um, have a better use for that train station. The transportation part, the new train station, is a half mile up the street. So this extra parking you know, is, is kind of wishful thinking that something magnificent is going to happen with the old train station. Nothing has been done there for years, and I don't see any, you know, immediate changes that are going to take place. Part of the POCD, and I won't read all the the comments on the POCD, but, you know, if you go to page 24, page 30, page 16, um, you know, there's comments about, you know, what to look for in the town center. And, and the bottom line is that the POCD states that we want to enhance the vitality of the town center. And in my humble opinion, parking lot does not do that. The POCD also says that, you know, when something significant changes, you know, in the town, especially in the town center, and this is, you know, in the executive summary, which I, I will read, that um, there should be a committee and, and maybe, you know, what Mr. Ryan was talking about, they, they did talk to other folks, but um, there should be a, uh, some type of ad hoc committee to discuss, 
you know, a proposed enhancement like this to the town. And I'm not sure that that has happened. We also have, you know, the POCD Implementation Committee. And I'm not sure if, if they've even weighed in on this proposal. And, and they really should. So the, the one thing I will read, and this is the executive summary, and it's just a couple lines. It's on page 112 of the POCD. And this talks about the executive summary for the town center survey. And it says, further, a majority of respondents supported extensive new development in this area, meaning town center, and the lower town center area, centered on Center Street and Colony Road. So, you know, that's what, you know, came out of the POCD. They want, people want extensive new development. And again, the parking lot doesn't do that. Um, yes, it, it may lead to that, but, um, you know, I, and, and I would disagree a little bit with Mr. Ryan's comments where, you know, if you put in a parking lot or, or a park, it is going to be hard to uh, change that use once, you know, something gets established. Um, you know, I, I don't think a parking lot, and, you know, this, this is a special uh, permit, so we do have, you know, the, the leeway to, to discuss this. Um, I don't think, again, in my humble opinion, um, that a parking lot serves the town of Wallingford well. Um, certainly it'll serve a few people around the uh, area, you know, across the street. You know, I think a lot of people, you know, may use that to, uh, you know, park their, their cars and sit on the street. Um, one of the things that um, uh, the POCD does state as far as parking, it really did not indicate a parking crunch in that area. And basically it stated that, you know, along Center Street behind the, the businesses, you know, the parking areas need, need to be, you know, fixed up a bit. And, you know, some of it has been, there has been some signage, but I don't think, you know, it's, it's complete. So, you know, the, the parking there, I think, is, is sufficient. Um, so I think I've said pretty much, uh, all I want to say. So I guess you can tell that I'm not in favor of this application and I'm, I'm not going to vote for it. Um, I don't know if a park is the right thing. Um, you know, again, I think that a collective committee uh, to discuss it a little more is probably, um, you know, what's needed. Uh, you know, we, there, there's a playground down the street from here, so I don't think, you know, a playground is the answer either. Maybe just a nice um, green space with benches. Uh, maybe it'll attract a coffee shop across the street. You know, people could um, sit out there, read a book, and, you know, I'd like to see something a little nicer than actually what's in front of the train station, which is just empty grass and a gazebo. You know, there's really no benches there, you know, no greenery. Um, you know, not that attractive, again, in my opinion. Um, so... I, you know, again, I, I, it's a valuable piece of property, but I, I just can't support a, a parking lot. Um, thank you. Thank you, uh, thank you, Mr. Cohen. I would assume, though, that you wouldn't have a problem with the seventy-four percent that's being going to be except essentially fixed up, which is an existing parking lot. So I assume you're 
your concern is with the brothers' lot. That, yeah, absolutely, that, that absolutely. So it's not the existing. Yes. It's not the existing lot that's there. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I can, you know, I, I I can appreciate your, you know, your comments and your concerns. Uh, my one concern would be, I probably shouldn't bring this up, but as far as planning for what we want to do with things, I, I go back to the the wooding lot which was purchased. That's been sitting there. Uh, I think finally there are some plans to at least make that into a more permanent parking lot. Is that the ideal thing for the town? I'm not certain. I know there were plans in the past for it that weren't, uh, you know, that weren't successful. Uh, but I would hate to see this parcel, when I say this parcel, meaning just the, the old brother's lot, the whatever, 0.33 acres, to kind of languish in its existing condition for who knows how many years. Uh, and I would think that if we didn't do anything with that lot, I suspect that those other two parcels may very well, there may very well be a, a desire for the town to at least fix that lot. And if there's not that desire, then we're stuck with what we have there right now that I don't believe any of us feel is very attractive and very inviting for, you know, for this town. So I, I appreciate your comments uh, and your concerns on it, but again, I, at least in my mind, I think for the moment that this is one of the one of the best plans for what's there, you know, for what's there now and how to improve that. And you know, we all kind of keep our fingers crossed that it, it, at some point in time the economy is going to start turning again. There's going to be interest in, you know, in developing. Uh, parcels, existing parcels, but also existing buildings, as well as perhaps this parcel. Is that going to happen, you know, in the, uh, in the next two or three years? I don't think so. I think it would be foolish to suggest that. Uh, but I would, you know, would certainly hope that as the economy turns around, that there are people that are interested in this, and the town would show an interest in, you know, helping a developer, or looking, I won't say partner with a developer, uh, but looking to you know have this parcel developed in in some manner, but I would just fret that my general sense is that if this plan isn't approved, that lot's going to sit there in disre no, say disrepair. The brothers' pop property will sit there the way it is, and those other two lots, other two properties, may or not be, we'll say fixed up. So that's so I, from my standpoint, I'm certainly in in support of this. So. With that, uh, I'm not sure if the uh, applicant would like to make any... Uh, yes, Mr. Hein. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just so that I'm clear as to my position on this, um, I, um, like I think many, were excited when the town purchased the brother's property and knocked the building down. Um, I. I view this as being a great opportunity for the town to uh, partner with a developer to develop the lot. Uh, so I really um, am disappointed uh, when I see that um, it's actually uh, going forward as a parking lot. Um, that being the case, um, or, or that being said, I, I think also um, that as um, the chairman points out, if there's not a, any interest in the um, property presently for development, I would hate to see it languish uh, as well. I don't think that just because we fix it up, it's going to attract development down there. I mean, it's a parking lot now. Um, so, you know, you're not changing the use of it. Um, and I don't think if it hasn't attracted development already, I don't think fixing it up is going to suddenly attract all this development, especially in these times. Um, but as the chairman points out, um, you know, that means that it could sit for a couple years. And if it's going to sit for years, you might as well have it look nice and presentable. Uh, in the meantime, um, my fear is that it remains a parking lot for a long time 
and never gets developed. That's my real, that's my real fear. Um, but from a, a, a logic standpoint, uh, the reason why I asked the question as to why you were here on a special permit is that, um, and, and whether uh, the regulations permit um, parking, is that even if we were to deny this tonight, the town could simply change the layout uh, and, make, and make this a site plan and not a special permit. Uh, and so from a practical standpoint, we can't stop this from happening. We can't stop it from being made a parking lot. Uh, and so I, I think um, uh, really, uh, as much as I hate to say it, uh, I probably will be voting for this um, uh, for those reasons. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hine. Mr. Fitzsimmons. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I would, I'd like to uh, just state for the record, I agree with uh, uh, Mr. Cohen, Mr. Seichter, and, and, and Mr. Hine. I think um, as soon as Mr. As soon as, as soon as the chairman talked about the Wooding Kaplan piece, I would share. That's exactly what I wrote down when you were speaking. Um, the Wooding Kaplan piece is down the road. Wallingford acquired it. I dare say more than thirty years ago, and I was there this weekend, and I was absolutely disgusted in the quality of that parking. And I, that's why I asked you if this is going to be paved in the timetable, because, as the chairman has said. And I have said, and others have said, Wallingford downtown does not have a parking problem. We have, we have quantity, not quality. And because of this lot, and because of the use, I agree with, I agree with the comments we received, the letters, and, and, and I, I love the idea. But I think Wood and Kaplan went through this. And what do we have? We have chip seal. No pave, no pavement, no lines, no. It's 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 frankly a good thing it's behind buildings because it's disgusting. Okay, but I think <clears throat> the plan you you present tonight and hopefully hopefully as you said you get the grant would make sense. <clears throat> this portion of town is an entryway. You know, growing up on the west side, now living over on this side, you know that's the, you're right. That's the main throwaway. So that's how people come across. It's tough. I mean, I miss I miss Brothers Restaurant, but things have changed. But I. I think letting it stay, its current state, is not optimal. Uh, I, I don't think you know the answer, but I'm going to ask you the question. So, for the, how, do you know the cost per parking spot? You have a budget for the project. I'm just curious yeah. because a developer would say, oh, it's going to cost me X much per parking spot. I mean, I'm just curious in relation because you talked about we've already acquired only one portion of the three. I don't off of the top of my head. Okay. But I'd be happy to get back to you on no, that. No, it's just, but, <laughs> but it sounds, it sounds as if you're going to have the right pavement, the right lighting, the, the, the relocation of the Welcome to Wallingford sign, you know, landscaping. I, 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 I don't disagree with Mr. Cohen. I, I'm not in favor of a parking lot per se, but this particular one, and due to the Current situation, and as you indicate, the potential for a grant, I do think it conforms to our regulations. I do think, you know, I mean, we're, I, I've said this before, and, and don't don't kick me, Mr. Seichter, but this building opened up with not enough parking. You know, so Wallingford has had a problem with downtown parking since this was Robert Early that became town hall. So providing the parking, you know, as, as Tim Ryan said, it's a vision thing. So I, I support this because of the vision, but I also support it because of the history of what happened at Wood and Kaplan. We can't let something sit there. You know, there's a Wooding Kaplan study committee, there was votes, and nothing happened. And what happened there was a travesty compared to what potentially could happen here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Fitzsimmons. Unfortunately, we're six feet away. <laughs> you you would have killed me. <laughs> I would not have. Uh, and yes, Mr. Cohen. Um, yeah, I'd just like to make another comment if I could. Absolutely. Um, so, it looks like I'll be the only one voting against this, but um, um, I do agree with, you know, all the comments about I don't want to see this languish. Absolutely not. But the problem I have is once, again, in my opinion, once this is turned into a parking lot, that's it. It's done. Nothing else will ever... 
um, be done with that. Um, I don't think it's, uh, you know, it, it is kind of the gateway to Wallingford, you know, downtown. And um, e even with, uh, you know, some, some flowers, you know, there's still a parking lot behind it. And, and honestly, you know, yeah, the grass is nice, but, you know, when the train goes by there, they're looking at the train station, really. They're not really looking, um, well, they are seeing the parking lot. I, I, um, but, yeah, that, that's my concern. I, I don't want to see it languish, but I don't think um, we've given this the due diligence to make a... Um, big, exciting decision. A parking lot was easy, and we should be thinking much bigger than this. We, we can do this. We have the people, um, and again, I don't think, you know, the POCD implementation committee weighed in on this, and, you know, that's, that's why we did this. You know, I, I think we ought to think a little bigger. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Any other commission members? I, I do have, before I close the public hearing, I do have a, one request from the engineering department. You know, as Mr. Fitzsimmons alluded to, the brothers, uh, excuse me, brothers lot, the uh, Wooding lot, if I recall, we've uh, approved, uh, rather approved a plan for that probably about a year ago. I, I think that's correct. Would you please just coordinate with Mr. Baltramidas, or ask Mr. Baltramidas when that work is going to be done We've, I've been receiving indications uh, that, well, we're going to start in a month. And I realize there's other issues that come up. We've had some storms that have come up that have created, uh, you know, increased workload for uh, the town, uh, town public works department. But, I mean, this has been going on for quite some time. I mean, at times for the last two years, although this year we haven't had uh, our celebrating Wallingford for, for the Two years prior to that, I called Rob and said, look, I'll come out there with a bucket of paint and a paintbrush and let's paint at least the lines. So, as Mr. Fitzsimmons pointed out, that lot is in not very good condition. We have a plan that's been approved. Again, I think it's been at least a year. So I would appreciate it if you would contact him. And I don't want to make you our, our, our messenger, but I, I would appreciate if you could perhaps get back to... Uh, just the, the commission with some idea when that may be done. I'd be happy to. Good. And before I close the public hearing, do you have any final comments that you would like to make? Um, You're I, not compelled to. I, I'd like to. Um, so I hope that you could see through this design that this is by no means a, a Band-Aid project. It really is our best effort with the funds that we do have to give it a brand new look. Uh, with the improved landscaping, you know, we really do. I, I drive this by this every day a couple times a day. So... Um, I would love something better to look at, and I know that it puts Wallingford's best foot forward. So I, I do think it's important that, you know, we, we focus on this landscaping in the top corner, which the grant money allows us to do, the lighting the grant money would allow us to do. So, um, you know, just giving people a, a safer and really more aesthetically pleasing um, parking area was, was our goal, and so I hope that you found this in the plan I presented today. Good enough. Thank you very much. With that, uh, unless there's any... Further, yes, Mr. Just Simmons. Point of clarification, Mr. Chairman. No bond because it's a town project, correct? That's correct. And no conditions? That's my understanding. Okay. Mr. Talbot, are there any conditions? I didn't recommend anybody, any, but that doesn't mean you can't attach whatever conditions you choose. I know, but I think the question was okay. if there were any conditions no. that were recommended. Is that correct, right. Mr. No, yeah, just Simmons? I wanted to confirm. Oh, there, okay. yeah, were, yeah, there were Mr. not, and there was no, no Mr. bond Mr. Fitz, Mr. Yeah. Fitzsimmons just wanted to confirm if there were yeah. any conditions recommended. Okay. That's, that was his question. Yes, thank you. We're good? Yep, thank you. So at this point in time, I'd uh, entertain a motion to close the public hearing. Mr. Chairman, I move we close the public hearing and the special, applica a special permit application for the town of Wallingford. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Cohan. Voting beginning with Mr. Cohan, please. Yes. 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 Public hearing is closed. Now, at this particular <clears throat> point in time, I'd entertain a motion on the application. Mr. Fitzsimmons. Mr. Chairman, I move the commission approve a special permit for the Town of Wallingford Engineering Department to permit a 128 space paved public parking lot for the Town of Wallingford 
on 1.31 acres located at 33 North Cherry Street, 120 Hall Avenue, and 87 Quimpiac Street has shown on plans entitled Site Plan, North Cherry Street Parking Lot Improvements, Town of Wallingford, Town of Wallingford, Connecticut, Department of Engineering, dated 9-9-2020. No conditions. Thank you, Mr. Fitzsimmons. We have a motion on the application. Do we have a second? Second. Seconded by Mr. Cohan. Voting beginning with Mr. Cohan. Uh, based on my opinion that this does not conform to our POCD, I will vote no. Yes. 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 And yes, the application has been approved. Have a good evening. Moving on, agenda item, agenda item number three, which is a zoning text amendment, Atlas 1 at uh, 100 Center Street. Again, if the applicant would uh, please come forward to begin preparing for their presentation. And Mr. Allenson, if you would please note all correspondence for the record. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Sorry. Number 504-20, amendment to section 4.26B.7 of the Wallingford Zoning Regulations to add wellness centers as a permitted use in the town center district. We have an interdepartmental referral from our fire marshal dated 9-15-20. We have an interdepartmental referral from our town engineer dated 9-15-20. We have correspondence to Tracy Malton dated October 5th, 2020 from uh, Thomas Talbot, Acting Town Planner. We have correspondence from Stephen Lazarus, dated October 6, 2020. We have a multi-page petition. No conclusion date on it. We have a set of information starting with an American Heritage Dictionary blog and including a presentation by Fitzgerald and Halliday and a National Association of Realtors Commercial Market Insights and a drawing, a uh, site plan, it looks like, from Lazarus and Sargent. The received date on this is October 9th, 2020. Sorry about the weird description on that last one. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Allison. Again, if the applicant would please uh, introduce uh, himself and uh, begin your presentation. Good evening, uh, co commissioners uh, and the chair, uh, citizens of Wallingford, guests and members of the general public. My name is Mark Bergamo. I'm an attorney with the Marcus Law Firm representing the applicant in this matter. This is Atlas. Uh, the address for the firm is 275 Brantford Road in North Brantford, Connecticut. This is Atlas 1's uh, Dr. Tracy Malton's application to change the current section of the Wallingford Planning and Zoning Regulations, Section 4.26B7, to allow medical dental office clinics and outpatient treatment facilities on the ground floor street facing the side of any building or in the, in the alternative to uh, allow wellness centers to be located thereon. We're advocating really for the uh, removal of the restriction in the town center district for those uh, <clears throat> medical uh, dental treatment centers. Uh, currently, the, we believe that the regulation is too restrictive and does not take into consideration the uh, uniqueness of the town center's area, the availability of such uh, health care treatment centers, the very nature of the patient's physical hardships uh, for accessibility to such centers. Uh, the uh, regulation deprives the average person who seeks, uh, by his or her very nature, treatment for the uh, physical pain or uh, medical uh, from access to and from such facility. Um, the Planning and Zoning Office is also supportive of the uh, removal of the, uh, the restriction as noted by its letter dated October 5th, 2020. 
We also support the change in the language that the, uh, the Planning and Zoning Office recommended. Uh, I should also point out that, uh, that the Economic Development Office supports, as well as the ZBA, um, from, uh, by past experience of uh, Ms. Malta trying to get a variance for a specific uh, building by way of example, 100 Center Street. Um, the, uh, the allowance of such other treatment centers that uh, allow, for example, as permitted use for veterinarians and animal hospitals in the area. Uh, and yet we don't have um, medical for treatment of human beings in the area. Um, that seems rather inconsistent. Um, I don't think that the intention really was to put a pet, pet above of that of a human being. Uh, the same may be said for other professional offices as well. well when one takes into cons further consideration that a person seeking treatment for a debilitating pain and suffering and has limited mobility cannot uh, come easily into a building without having the access to such offices, which uh, certainly has to be most open and easily accessible. Uh, these patients usually seek relief and alleviation for such pain and suffering, or for treatment, or for diagnosis. To walk a flight of stairs, to board an elevator, to open a door, creates a restriction for the care and treatment that they so desperately need. That's why the ground floor, uh, to allow uh, ground floor use, uh, should be allowed. It also is giving a reasonable accommodation uh, with regards to the American with Disabilities Act. Uh, the Commission should, con should take into consideration uh, the uniqueness of the area, the, the Town Center District, which um, that it has. Uh, by way of example, um, the, the applicant's uh, own building uh, had a unique character to it. It was on the corner of two, two streets, uh, both William Street and uh, Center Street. And uh, the sign uh, here, it's basically uh, almost limited all use on the ground floor for it. Um, the reason why I uh, put down uh, uh, service establishments, um, uh, ex-commissioner uh, uh, Mr. Glidden, Mike Glidden, had, uh, had previously uh, submitted a letter uh, by way of support of a variance or for allowing the medical offices and uh, he, he cited to uh, the American Heritage uh, Dictionary uh, for definitions as to what s service establishments were that really are allowed. Um, the zoning regulations, are, as you are aware, are meant to facilitate the use of the mun municipality's land use on behalf of, and the betterment of its citizens. Um, I, can't, I can't believe that it was intended to restrict its citizens from um, the, the available access uh, for, for treatments, medical, dental, uh, or, or treatment centers. Uh, one of the uh, points that the Commission uh, raised during the original change to the regulations was the availability of parking spaces in order not to deprive other shops, things of that nature, and that goes to the, the essence of uh, the, the use of whatever, in, by way of example, uh, Dr. Malton's uh, building at 100 Center Street has that parking spaces and things of that nature that can facilitate uh, the availability of a uh, public to use medical offices. Um, <clears throat> I'd just like to your, your own, um, in, in the changing of the regulations back in August of 2018, there was a number of issues that were raised with regards to whether or not uh, medical dental offices uh, uh, should be allowed on the ground floor, that they may restrict the, uh, the use of other facilities. In, in our case, we're advocating that they, they do not. Actually, they go to more for uh, betterment of the downtown area in that a uh, person goes for medical treatment. They also use the, um, the downtown area for their other needs, for example, dining, entertainment, other shopping. So that you're basically uh, creating a uh, captive, captive public for that use. Um, in uh, terms of, uh, we're dealing with the, unfortunately, uh, this COVID situation where God only knows 
how many small stores, small businesses, such as dining and uh, uh, shopping, are going to be shut down, possibly permanent. I mean, we have no idea, um, but it's we're in for the long haul, I guess. Um, I also point out to you, uh, I gave to you as a uh, retail uh, a memorandum with regards to in August of uh, 2020 that was uh, prepared by the National Board of Realtors, which also cites to that uh, the areas of shopping, things of that nature, are going more toward the online, uh, so that the actually average retail is going to be um, reduced in the in the future. That's what they're anticipating. But I mean, as something as with medical facilities in the area, uh, treatment centers, other professional offices such as uh, lawyers' office, things of that nature, those all have a, have a way of attracting businesses so that they can actually uh, thrive in the downtown area. I also made uh, citations to your own TOD plan uh, with uh, with regards to, and I'm not going to get into great detail I, because I've uh, cited to, uh, I, I think, page 23 of that uh, plan uh, pretty much uh, encapsulates uh, a lot of what we're advocating here is that it's a good mixed use and medical was, it, it should be considered a part of that. So, um, in, in essence, we're, we're concurring with both the, the planning and zoning and, uh, as far as to uh, allow, generally, the, the medical dental offices. We provided a wellness center because there are a lot of uh, towns that have wellness centers. I tried to uh, put together a definition because, <laughs> honestly, um, there's nothing by way of uh, statutes or things of that nature which go to define wellness centers. You can, you know, it's an alternative to uh, to allow. But I think if we allow the medical dental offices, clinics, outpatient, I think that's going to cover the the whole scheme of things. Uh, I'm just going to ask uh, the applicant uh, herself to add any additional comments with regards to that. And then we have just a couple of other people and probably some members of the public. All right, good. Uh, basically, what we want uh, Excuse to me, just your name and address, uh, please. Sorry. Uh, Dr. Tracy Malton, and I'm at 167 Stonehenge Lane in Gilbert. Could you just pull the microphone just a little bit closer that, to you? Okay. Actually, I think you have to keep it like this. <laughs> okay. Repeat it again? If you would, okay. please. Okay. Tracy Malton at 167 Stonehenge Lane in Guilford, Connecticut. Um, so, what, what we're proposing is allowing medical on the first floor. Uh, we were trying to say it originally as a wellness center to kind of keep with the spirit of the decree because they didn't, uh, according to Casey, she didn't want a whole bunch of medical shops up and down Center Street. Um, what we're trying to do is actually bring people to downtown Wallingford. And what we do find is that people who come to, for downtown for medical use, they tend to go before or after their visits to other places, other retail shops. Right now, we're currently in the town center at um, Hall, the corner of Hall Avenue, North Colony. And being down in that area, which I kind of find it ironic, is we tried to buy Brothers, but uh, the town got me on it. So, uh, but we're you were going to make it a park? <laughs> uh, I was going to make it actually a wellness center, was my, <laughs> was my plan. But um, we're trying to increase the vitality there, and I'm, I'm kind of uh, thwarted in my current space. And we find that because the North Colony is such a big street, people don't want to cross it. Um, and so we're finding that coming up the street to be in a larger location, one, we're able to bring more people downtown, but also we're able to get them into more of the downtown area that we're trying to grow. And, you know, as Mr. Cohen said, to increase the vitality in downtown center. We want to enhance the downtown center. And currently I... I my personal practice, I attract people all the way from South Windsor and Killingworth, and I've got people coming in from Orange and, and Milford. 
to my little my little shop. So those people would not be coming to Wallingford if it wasn't for what we're doing. So medical does bring people to our town. And when they're there, and especially in the world of COVID, sometimes there's a wait. And when there's a wait and you got 15 minutes, 20 minutes, well, I'll go grab a burger or I'll go have a drink at the pub type of thing. And we're, we're seeing that. And I got a lot of people who are very excited if we get up the street that they can go to Knuckleheads because everybody loves Knuckleheads. <laughs> if I could have Dr. Malton just explain the type of people that she treats just to, to, for the commission to understand that um, the type of the type of possible injuries or um, disabilities that they may face. Okay. So um, in, in my office, I'm a, a chiropractor but I don't only just see back pain patients. So I do see back pain patients, which obviously may have mobility issues, but I also pe see people with vertigo. I see people with autoimmune disorders, with uh, Parkinson's, um, uh, Alzheimer people. Um, it's, it's not necessarily just what you would think of in a chiropractic office. And when somebody has vertigo, they can't necessarily sit in an elevator to go to a second floor. If they have excruciating low back pain, they can't walk upstairs. Sometimes even, even, even a stair can be um, just way too much for somebody in that, that state. And so it's, it's, it can be very traumatic. I also see you know, infants and children and you know, all those other great things, but... Um, uh, we also have, uh, Dr. Malton, you have uh, Mr. L. Jacobs. Yes. Um, that you would like to well, we're going to go first to the commission before we ask okay. comments from the public. Does that conclude your uh, presentation? Yes. Okay, good. Members uh, of the commission would like to comment on the application. Mr. Cohen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, yeah, I'd be in favor of this. Um, you know, that being said, uh, I, I kind of want to ask a question of the commission and, you know, the acting town planner because, um, you know, we spend a lot of time uh, revising our regulations and, you know, this is what um, we came up with. Now we have to change them. And again, I, I think this is a great uh, business and absolutely agree it's going to bring Vitality, thank you for <laughs> using that word, uh, people downtown. So I'm absolutely in favor. Um, but, uh, and I guess my question is more rhetorical um, in nature, you know, because again, we did spend a lot of time. We came up with this regulation, now we have to change it. Um, y you know, I, I don't know how we arrived at the um, you know, regulation, you know, a couple of years ago when we, we did change these and, and again, now we have to revise it. Are we, you know, setting ourselves up, um, for, you know, another revision in the future because of this? Um, well, I guess I would first, you know, just comment, we don't have to revise our regulations. We have an application before us, you know, by an applicant to change our regulations, but right. we don't have to, you know, revise it. That's something for the commission to determine if, in fact, you know, we want to revise it. So that's purely within our purview. It's not that, you know, there is a dictate that this is what we have to do. So I just want to clarify that. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, again, more rhetorical, but yeah, I'd be in favor of this. Thank you. Other commission members? Yes, uh, Mr. Hine, and then we'll go to Mr. Allens. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, as well, am in favor of this. Um, this is actually um, something that um, I think I brought up before um, in, in prior workshops. It, you know, I, I think that this particular type of business is different than a pure medical dental office. It's... Um, I like the, the reference to wellness center. Um, you know, when I look at the list of services that, that are listed under there, um, you know, personal training. Well, we already have personal training. 
um, in downtown. Massage therapists, we already have massage therapists in downtown. Skin and body care services, yoga instructors. We already have those services in our downtown area. Um, so, you know, I don't see why we would prevent a chiropractor um, from uh, conducti conducting her business um, in the same manner, uh, in the same building, with these other services, simply because she's located on the, the ground floor. Um, I, I think, uh, you, you know, as I look at this, though, I almost wonder whether um, it might be easier to just make it more simple and just say medical dental offices um, so that uh, we don't get into a... The, the problem we ran into initially was we defined the services and then you had a business that came in that was different. Uh, and I think they, if you start getting into, you know, what's a wellness center, what's a medical office, and I, I almost wonder whether it's easier to keep it simple um, and just allow it and get rid of the uh, limitation on first floor, you know, to the first floor. Um, that, that, that's my thought on it. Um, I do think that, uh, I, I think the regulation does need to be changed. Um, I think this is a this is a situation that is different than what we initially contemplated. Um, it, you know, to um, to address uh, uh, Commissioner Cohen's um, uh, comments. Uh, you know, I remember we actually did have a discussion about this when we were looking at our regs, and I think. The reason why we created that limitation was we were trying to encourage retail uh, establishments in the downtown and we did not want to have medical offices taking up storefronts in our in our downtown area and that was the reason why we included that that limitation um, but I don't think we have that concern here with this type of business that is offering very similar um, at least some of the services that are already offered in our downtown area. It's just that she, uh, uh, this particular business would be offering additional services. So um, I'm in complete favor of this, um, and, and uh, I think the only question is how we, how we structured the, the revision. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Hine. I guess my comments would be I, I, I agree with Mr. Hine to some degree because at one point, you know, he is speaking about your a, a wellness center. At other times, we're talking about medical and dental. From at least from from my perspective, uh, I don't want to see at least yeah I don't want to see our storefronts in our downtown changed into medical and dental offices. I that's just and I think we've had I think as you mentioned, our prior town planner gave you that somewhat of the same same opinion. However, I guess I'm a little bit different. I'm not sure if I'm a little bit different from uh, Mr. Hine or not with respect to your business because I'm looking at your business as a wellness center and I look at how you define a wellness center and, and I'm looking at your definition. And while I may not totally agree with, with some of the wording on it, but I'm looking at your definition. As I think as Mr. Hine pointed out, there are some businesses uh, in our downtown that already provides some of the services that you, and I'll call that a wellness center, would provide. And uh, you've been operating in our, in our downtown, in our town center, and providing those services, or, or some of those services. I'm sure you don't have yoga and some of those. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but that's what you're looking to expand to. Mm -hmm. You know, so from, from my perspective, I looking at allowing dental, medical and dental offices on the first floor, I, I, that's something that, I, that certainly I can't support. The idea of a, a wellness center and the way to some degree the way you've defined it here. Again, there's certain things in here when you're talking about medical offices in, in the first part of your the paragraph, medical offices, um, 
the way that's in there, I, I don't necessarily, I, I, don't, I don't agree with that, but when I'm, I'm looking at your definition, uh, there's, to a very large degree, I, I look at that definition and say, okay, I, I understand your business, what you're providing, how it already is being provided in our, uh, in our downtown to some degree, certainly not all of the services. So the idea of medical and dental on the first floor, from my perspective, I don't think I can support that, uh, or I know I can't, but the idea of a wellness center in a well-defined way, and I think you know, to a very large degree what you've put here is, uh, you know, meets that, but I, I think there still needs to be some, some work on that. That's something that, you know, that I could support. So that's, that's my position. I know Mr. Fitzsimmons, I believe you had some, some comments. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I guess um, in the letter that was sent from the acting town planner, or town planner, excuse me, to you, um, he, he states, this office understands that this proposed amendment has been submitted in response to a denial for a use variance by the Wallingford Zoning Board of Appeals for first floor medical offices with direct frontage on Center and William. So is this application more about first floor medical dental or medical use, or is it more about the um, uh, definition of adding wellness center? What we're trying to do is to bring a wellness center into the downtown and in on the first floor because people who do want to visit a wellness center can't necessarily make it to a second floor be it um, stairs even even elevators so we want to have i want to have a wellness center in at 100 center street that's really what i want to do but i'm more than happy to have you know uh, other wellness centers in town we do have another medical building in town, but it's not uh, set up the, the same way. Um, so we're trying to, to be able to bring more people downtown and be able to expand my business as well. And we were trying to uh, do it as a wellness center versus just a medical, the reason it was written the way it was, to try to honor the spirit of what mm -hmm. you know Casey was explaining to me that you didn't want to take up all your storefronts. The particular building that I'm using has no storefront. So there is no looking in windows to be able to figure out who's in there, who's not in there, because the windows are tiny and very high. So did, did, I, did I answer your you question? You did, you oh. did. If I could, through you, Mr. Chairman, sure. uh, Dr. Malton, I guess the question would be, under the definition, um, healthcare providers, you yourself have a license from the mm -hmm. state of Connecticut. Are nutritionists licensed? Yes, they are. Trainers? Um, not 100 for sure. Actually, we do have a trainer. Therapist? I, I, I guess yes. what I'm yes. saying is all of these are licensed individuals because mm -hmm. generally they're, they're yes. involved some um, uh, permitted touching right. of a person. So I, I'm having a tough time with the second part of your request, and it really has to do with the ground level, street facing side of any building. I, I would be, I'd like to be on the record. I think what you do. You know, anyone in the medical community, certainly any first responder, A+, plus, we thank you for what you do because you make all of us feel better, you know, at various times of our lives. So I'm not opposed to the wellness center. Mm -hmm. I am challenged with the first floor, okay? okay. And, and the reason I say that is I've got the, the zoning book here, and it's not just on the medical dental offices where we don't want things on the ground floor, you know? So what... The reason I started by asking about your why you're here, because why you made the applications, because you were denied by the ZBA, right? And that's, if I understand correctly, that's what the letter said. You were denied. That's right. That's why we went here. But they actually right. stated in the that they were in support of what we were trying to do. Right. They just couldn't honor it as a hardship. They said okay. that building itself wasn't a hardship. And, and and quite frankly, that's where I was going. I think because. I've heard most of your comments, but again, I'm, I'm, I have an open mind, you know, but I think the issue of the ground floor um, street facing side of the building, I, I do recall, I do recall the conversations we had in August of 18 and, 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 you know, because we didn't want the downtown first floor use to not be something. And I, I think as I think of your application, 
The challenge for me, and certainly for us, is you proposed a change to the regulations. I have, I'm on record with almost everybody up here. I'm not in favor of use variances and variances, so I understand why you were denied. But in this particular situation, your fix is just change the regulations so it impacts everybody in the zone, and that's a challenge. Because, you know, for me, it's a challenge for me to get over because it's a first floor usage. You know, and I, as I said at the beginning, I, I support what you do, and I can support the wellness center definition portion of this, but because it's a regulation change that doesn't just impact you, I, I still need some more information. You know, well, because I think, because I think about not your building, yeah. which I'm very familiar with because I read the record journal, you know, but okay. I think of just the next block up and the next block up. I mean, okay. so, so it, it, we can't be so focused. You know, the ZBA, you always are talking about your individual piece of right. land. Correct. With a regulation change, you're talking about the whole zone. Right. And so for me, that's a big, big leap. I understand why. You know, it's your certainly right to apply, but that's the piece I'm having difficulty with. Well, okay, my, my, my question to you is, is yoga. Yoga and massage are per of uses. And with yoga, it's on the first floor. People who go to yoga are usually pretty flexible, <laughs> and they can make it to the second floor. Sure. So if you're going to say that somebody who has a physical uh, in, uh, impediment to being able to go to a second floor can't be on the first floor, but yet you're going to allow somebody who could very easily go to the second floor, but yet they're allowed on that first floor. I know we have, uh, I, I have a woman in the audience that, that two steps into my office, there have been times that she has driven all the way to my office, and she drives all the way from Cromwell to be here, mm. that the two stairs sure. to get into my office, there are some days that she has driven to the front and can't do it and has to turn around and drive all the way back to Cromwell because she just can't make those two stairs. And to, say, to just tell somebody that they have to make it in, get in, you know, even if there's an elevator, which in my particular building there's not, right. to sit there, push the button, wait for an elevator, and then again with people who have low back pain, that little jolt at the top and bottom can throw them into a muscle spasm that can take weeks to get out of. You have somebody with vertigo, and they can, they can it, it, it can, again, put them in the hospital. And so you're trying to say that these people have to go to the second floor, that they're not allowed in the downtown center to get medical care. Mm. That, I mean, they, they should be allowed if it, that area. May I, may I just add also, too, is that in your own uh, discussions, which I've read the minutes of, You've also made analogies to legal offices, which has no restrictions. Legal offices. Okay, what's the difference between a, a law office and a medical office? One treats patients for physical problems, the other one, the other one treats clients for the legal problems. Um, the question also, too, is the allowance of veterinarians and animal hospitals. That, that's still allowed in the area. What's the difference between a human being and a pet? I might. Yeah. I, I, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, you, and again, Dr. Malton, your, your response kind of went right back to your building, and, and I think that's where I'm trying to tell you, for me, it's not about your building, it's about the entire zone. It, and and, and, and I, I, I think the challenge is, your, your reason you're before us this evening is you're requesting a zoning text amendment, so we really can't talk about your particular right. building. Right. And that, that's hard. And I, I, wanna, I wanna acknowledge that because you, this is the route you've decided to come because the ZBA denied your request. And so this is your, it's your right. I, I just, for me, as I said, you know, and I, I would share with you, you know, quite candidly, I, I, hear where you're, I hear where you're talking about, I know it's about your building, but really I have to look at the whole zone. The whole zone. Okay, well, so, because it would impact everybody in that zone. Right. But what, I guess what I'm trying to, to, my proposal is that a medical office, one of the reasons mm -hmm. that you guys have rewrote the zoning is because you want a very healthy, you want Absolutely. that increased vitality, you want the enhancement to the downtown center. We, we all want that. We want, mm -hmm. we, the, the, the better Wallingford gets, the better mm -hmm. you know, we all get. 
And so with a medical office in the downtown center, it is going to bring people downtown. Mm. People who wouldn't necessarily be coming to Wallingford. And for you to eliminate them from the downtown center, then they're not going to necessarily go to the, the neighboring shops. And then the add into the fact that, you know, uh, if you look at the realtor's uh, information there, that they're saying that retail is, is dying in, because of what's happened. COVID has closed down so many shops that it will not come back. We have other, other restaurants in town, you know, that you know, Jay Christian's is, is gone. They're, they're not coming back after this. Which, you know, so this is, this is a, a building, this is a, um, not the building, this, this is a medical going to continue. Our population is aging. There, we got more and more demand for medical, for healthcare, for wellness. Mm -hmm. And we need to make it accessible. It needs to be on the ground floor because you can't put us at the second floor because people can't access it. If I might, just, one, just one, one more thing, Dr. Moulton, and I understand you have people here. I just want to clarify something your representative said. There are three things in our regulations for town center where we do not allow ground level street facing side of any building. It is number six, general business offices, which would include a legal office, um, medical dental offices and clinics, which is your suggested change, and residential units. Other than that, I mean, we're, we're certainly not discriminating because Wallingford has ample uses. We have a very diverse zoning, but the downtown center and the ground floor is limited. Not, it's not discriminating against medical dental. It's, it's general offices as well as residential uses is what I'm, what I'm offering. So it's, it, we didn't just carve out the medical dental area. But you, you've actually made uh, a funeral home. An okay use in the downtown center, so we right. could put, we could turn that turn right. it into a funeral home. Right. How is that increasing vitality to <laughs> Wallingford or a vet's office when you bring your cat to get its shots? You're not going to walk to the neighboring businesses because you're, you've you've got a cat. The, yeah. So I don't see how that is helping Wallingford. <laughs> yeah, I, I I mean part of it is you know I, I'm I'm older, but I mean Wallingford you know. We had several funeral homes in, right in downtown. They're not there anymore because they've converted. That's what happened. So it was a permitted use. It, it's we're an old New England town, so it, you know it, it's kind of it's kind of a remnant, and we left it in there in case someone did want to you know do that. But I, I, I don't. I think you understand my points, and I, I'm willing to listen more. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Consumers. Mr. Allenson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I love your building. It's a beautiful building, it's in a beautiful spot, and I love the idea of a wellness center there. And I, I want to thank Mr. Fitzsimmons for his comments, because the idea of offices on the first floor, and, and Mr. Chairman, your comments, um, it, didn't, it doesn't strike with the plan in our discussions. I, I was at every single workshop that we had. We had, I think, four or five workshops on this. We had discussion after discussion. I think we had two public hearings um, going forward. And I'm extremely sympathetic to, to what you want to do here. Um, I do have a, a couple comments. And part of what Mr. Fitzsimmons brought up is it can't be just your building. And I'm looking at the proposed amendment here. And the amendment, if approved, would allow two dentists to rent out an office to a nutritionist in their building, call it a wellness center, and then have first floor office space, which is not what we're looking to do. And that nutritionist could be second floor under this amendment. That's the problem with, that I have with this, is it opens the door not to what you want to do, but for someone else to game the language that's here for that advantage. And I think that that would create a, sorry to quote the language, but a slippery slope of abuse beyond what we're looking to, to have in this area. The other thing that I did want to mention is 
most uh, for work I, I go in and out of a lot of medical treatment facilities, a lot of nursing homes, a lot of hospitals, and they all have some sort of step up or at least a curb cut where, where a chair can roll up. And the majority of them have elevators. And I know you mentioned that some of your patients can't ride in elevators, otherwise they would be in the hospital, mm -hmm. which has elevators. So I'm just, I understand what you're saying, and I understand where that's coming, and your building does not have an elevator, so I under, understand that piece of it, but it's, it's not striking me as a need to amend, especially to this degree. Maybe a different amendment would be more appropriate. Maybe we can look at doing something a little bit different. But as it's written right here, I can't support that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, again, just to reiterate before I go out to the public or if there's any other commission members, you know, I think what was proposed by our acting town planner is something that certainly I, I cannot have, not agree with where we're having, you know, medical, dental offices, clinics. As I said before, when I'm looking at your definition of a wellness center that you presented, and I'm looking at that in, in saying, I think as one or two of the other commission members mentioned, that there are some components in that that we already have in a downtown area. So that's something that I would be willing to consider adding a wellness center, a well-defined, I, I think you're to some degree there with your with what you're proposing, but a well-defined uh, uh, definition, if you would. But again, looking back at the sweeping change of eliminating or allowing dental, medical offices all on the first floor. And, you know, my, when I'm talking about the wellness center, I'm not uh, in why I would be perhaps in favor of that. It has nothing to do with your location. And it has nothing to do with the building that you are in or the challenges that our regulations may present for your building. So I just want to make that clear for the record. It has nothing to do with that. It has more to do with at least what I believe a, a wellness center, a well-defined wellness center and what it would provide uh, would be. So I, I, I would simply leave it at that. Before I go out to the public, I'm not sure if there's any other commission members that would like any make any comments. Yes, uh, Mr. Hine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, and, and I would uh, really, um, I, I think, echo um, and reinforce your comments. Uh, I, I really think um, that we are getting caught up in the fact that um, this is a, that the applicant provides chiropractic treatment, uh, and we're looking at it as a medical, a pure medical business. And that's, that I don't think is what is being proposed here. Um, and I think that if we can get to a clearer definition of wellness center, I think we'll have something. Um, because I, I would really hate to see um, this business, uh, and, and in particular this application, uh, be denied simply because we're focusing on chiropractic services uh, to the extent that we are. Because when you look at all the other services, or just about all the other services that are listed here, they are all services that are already being provided in the downtown area. Um, and I think that we are just getting caught up in this notion that, well, because chiropractic treatment is being pr proposed, there's a violation uh, of the regulation. Um, and this is a different, in my opinion, this is a different business. Um, this is not what we had contemplated when we included that, that limitation in the regulations. Um, and in fact, I agree with that limitation. I mean, I think that's a, that's a worthwhile limitation. 
But I don't think that that limitation applies to this type of business. And I think that's a, that's a fault in our regulations. Um, this is an issue that I brought up before. I think that that's something that we have to address. In fact, I, I think I've suggested uh, that we address it. Um, and I think the applicant here is actually helping us to get there. Um, and I think that, uh, you, you know, I, I assume that we are stuck with what is being proposed, that we do, I mean, do we, and through you, Mr. Chairman, to Mr. Talbot, I mean, are we limited to what is being proposed or can we offer different language or, I mean, how does... Uh, well, I think that uh, we, would be, we would be amenable to uh, suggest language, I think. Yeah, uh, my, I, I guess if I could, not to interrupt you, Mr. Hine, but again, it, it depends upon the commission's feeling as far as a wellness center, if that is a, or should be a permitted use. If that is the case, as I mentioned, there's things in here, there's, you know, mentions of, you know, medical offices and other items in here that uh, creates an issue for me. And I think Mr. Allenson, you know, brought up the, the idea of the unintended consequences. Uh, when I'm looking farther down in your definition of a wellness center, you know, I'm looking at that and I, I think that there's wording in there that needs to be better defined. And candidly, I don't think we're going to be able to do that tonight, the five people sitting here. Uh, my suggestion would be, and it's only a suggestion, uh, I, I think that if the commission is of the opinion that a wellness center would be an appropriate use in our downtown, that we make some of those comments uh, on the record is what, what, we're, what we're looking for. And then I would suggest that we forward those comments to our corporate counsel and have our corporate counsel contact the applicant's representative to see, in fact, if something could be uh, worked out that meets the, you know, the commission's goal uh, uh, as far as how we see development in our downtown. That, that's, that would be, that, that's just simply my opinion. We have four other people here who have, I'm sure, different opinions, but I think, Mr. Hine, I guess that would be a little bit in response to you. I, I don't think that tonight, certainly this commission could make a motion to approve this, make a motion to deny it. We could, uh, you know, sit here and try to hash out language amongst us in, until whenever. But uh, that's at least my response. I'm sure other commission members may have, you know, a different, you know, different view on that. And with that, I believe I see Mr. Cohen going to the microphone. Well, you asked, Mr. Chairman. So, yeah, I, I do think uh, wellness centers, uh, uh, would be appropriate for our downtown. Um, so yeah, if we could, you know, uh, clean up the definition, uh, you know, I'm, I'd like to see it. Any other commission members before I go out to the public? Mr. Allenson, he'll be the last one and then we'll go to the public. Just, just a uh, follow up that, to that, Mr. Chairman, is if we're going to discuss whether wellness centers should be added, we also need to discuss whether it should be first floor use. Oh no! Ab, ab, no, ab, absolutely. I, I guess I'm, I'm maybe working on the the assumption that we are talking about you know first floor use. That's that's my assumption. With that, uh, I will go out to the public again. This is a public hearing. Any members of the public who would like to speak, please come forward with your name and address. We'll have this gentleman and then this young lady in the back. Uh, either one. You can take that microphone right there, sir, or you can take the stand-up microphone. Your choice. And again, just your name and address, please. Uh, and I think that needs to be turned on. I'm not certain. How about that? Uh, you got it. There we go. I'm technologically challenged, but I figured that one out. My name is Al Jacobs. I live at 130 Winthrop Road in, in Guilford. I'm also the owner-broker of Sunset Creek Realty. I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, population shifts uh, as it relates to, to our state in this area. Uh, in the state of Connecticut, we're losing people. Uh, it's no great uh, secret. 
we're not as affected as badly as some states, but we're still losing people. But it's more important when you look at the demographics. Um, in a Rotary meeting some 10, 12 years ago, State Senator Ed Myers said that the state of Connecticut is losing 10,000 people between the ages of 20 and 35 every year. And when I looked around, he was right. In the last 10 years, we have lost more and more young people. We're gradually becoming an older society. The Connecticut uh, Commission on Women, Children, and Seniors, uh, their informational uh, pamphlet said that between 2010 and 2040, Connecticut's population of people age 65 and older is projected to grow by 57%, but its population of people age 20 to 64 is projected to grow less than 2%. Overwhelmingly, these growing numbers of older adults want to stay in their communities and have choice, independence, and dignity. We in the real estate committee, uh, community see a demand for multi-generational homes. They don't want to leave this area. Uh, you heard a little bit about the commercial real estate. Retail is dying. It's, it's a whole new paradigm going on here. Uh, also, in real estate, we're currently experiencing the COVID if effect. I'm sure that you probably have noticed an influx of New York license plates in your town. We are seeing a lot of people from New York who want to move here and escape the, uh, the craziness there. Usually they're older people who have the financial ability to make the move. They're not young people. This year may be the anomaly, but I think it's going to have long-term effects in the state of Connecticut for a long time. It's going to continue to increase the percentage of elderly people. And that is only going to accentuate the need to have services that deal with the elderly and their potential mobility and ambulatory issues. The ADA is pretty strict on the, uh, the mandates for both residential and commercial. Um, in my humble opinion, to steal your, your uh, usage, it just seems that a first floor wellness center that is given to keeping people healthy seems in concert with the goals of the ADA as well as maintaining a healthy balance for the t downtown area. Thank you. Thank you, sir. And I believe this uh, young lady in the back would like to uh, comment. Yeah, if you would turn the uh, microphone on, please. Figure that out. <laughs> no, it's for my handicapped mom in the back. <laughs> yeah. Good evening. Um, my name is Lisa Keithen, and I live at 3 Man Memorial Drive in Cromwell, Connecticut. And um, for the last six or seven years, I make a weekly trek from Cromwell um, to Tracy's office. And like she said, there are a couple of times that I've had to turn around and go home because I look at her steps going into her office right now and I I just can't can't get over them but and I'm sorry that I don't because when I always walk out of her office better than I walked in <laughs> particularly my ailment is that I have a young onset Parkinson's disease I've had it since 2012 and one of the reasons why I do get around better than as, as well as I try to now is because I do my weekly chiropractic care. So having a place on the first floor, or having a place where you don't have to park and be worried about the trucks coming around the corner or the walk a, a, a further from the parking lot would be a, a dream come true for me right now. It'd be, it'd be, and, and having a place where I could also... Uh, be part partake in other wellness activities like the yoga, the massage therapy. If it's all in one center, I have like one-stop shopping, so to speak, because now it's difficult for me to go to three or four different places. I could literally get all of my wellness in one spot. And um, but I do also 
appreciate some of the businesses here in Wallingford because when I do plan my trips to, from Cromwell to Wallingford, I make sure that I take my shopping list for BJ's and I fill up my gas tank. <laughs> and, um, you know, I prefer the Wallingford Walmart over the Cromwell Walmart <laughs> lots of times. So I'm also spending my money here in town. I also frequent and love your restore down at the Habitat Humanity Restore. So I just think it, I would be very grateful if this could be approved and we could get over the issue of the wording. It seems like that might be the only problem, but it would be a great benefit to me and I would tell everyone about it. I don't know what else to say. That's fine. Thank you very much. I have some things to say, but I'll, I'll come down there. Oh, sure. Just if you would just make sure you state your name and address, please. Hi, I'm Gabrielle Rodriguez. I live with my mother at uh, Three Man Memorial Drive in Cromwell. I am my mother's sole care provider. I help her with various things. And most recently, I have been coming down here with her to help her in to Tracy's office. And I know that Tracy's uh, employees are very generous and they're very kind and they do help my mother when I am not there. But it's been hard for her to do it and, I, and when she doesn't get her chiropractic care, she suffers. It debilitates her weekend, her week, it just, Throws her all off. So for her to have a first floor, it will set my mind at ease because I worry about her because if she falls down, she's down. And getting her back up is extremely hard, even when I do it in our own home. There's been times where I've thought about calling 911, but we get through it. So it would be very helpful if this is on the first floor for me, for my mother, and all of the other multiple disability, disabled disease, um, conditions out there that I know can benefit from a first floor wellness center. There's MS, there's ALS, there's multiple ones out there other than just hers and back problem. That's all I have to say. Good enough, thank you very much. Erin Benham, 41 South Main Street. Um, I too hope that the wording, that you could get past this wording that I think you're hung up on this. Um, I think Dr. Mullen's reputation speaks for itself, her successful, her professional business um, speaks for itself. Increasing foot traffic in downtown Wallingford, certainly it would happen. I know we're not supposed to talk about the building itself, <laughs> but as a resident who lives in downtown Wallingford, that building is important to people that live in Wallingford. It's a historical building, 130 years old, that has always been a bank. And it has the opportunity now to be something different that the town can use and that the town can have as something that will be vital for the town and the downtown area. So I do hope that we can get past the wording that seems to be holding up this great proposal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Excuse me, uh, we'll let this young lady and then. Hi, my name is Christine Wallach. I live at 84 Atkins Street in Meriden. Um, I am Dr. Moulton's office manager. And I just wanted to speak a little bit to what Lisa said in terms of getting in and out of the building. Um, right now we have a f quite a few patients who need help getting in just because of those two steps. It sometimes takes 10 or 15 minutes to get somebody in the door and then again getting them out the door. And so when we're seeing multiple patients a day, it does prove to be very difficult to get them in and out in a timely fashion so that they can be treated. Um, in terms of the downtown vitality, I can tell you that on an average Friday, we may see 100 patients in one day. And because of COVID right now, we have a capacity within our building, so people are waiting outside. Last week, I had 24 people waiting outside for over an hour to see Dr. Tracy. 
during that time, they were going and getting coffee. They were doing a little bit of shopping here and there. And if we were able to move into the bank building, there would be a lot more to offer those people. And I think you guys would see a definite increase in the foot traffic down there. So, thank you. Good enough. Thank you. Yes. Good evening. You can hear me. Um, I'm Liz Davis. I'm a 31 Odette Drive. I'm the president of uh, Wallingford Center, Inc. I wanted to come and um, just provide some support for Tracy and her request for a wellness center um, to be at that 100 Center Street. Um, our board has met on this, and uh, we all agree at this point that that um, possible change, especially with the wording, would be beneficial for the downtown area. Um, I do want to say that we represent a lot of merchants in the area, and based on that, we have had much discussion in reference to this as far as opposing opinion versus agreeing on it. And we think at this point that the town is in need of something a little more um, exploratory in this area as far as the wellness center, and we do um, approve of the fact that we would love to have her in that downtown space. So I appreciate it. Thank you very much. You know, thank you. Other members from the public? Yes, sir. Hi, my name is Jennifer Nuzzo, 4 Simpson Avenue, Wallingford, Connecticut. Um, I have two aging parents, and they have a hard time with stairs. So for my mom to be able to get into Dr. Tracy's building, sorry, Dr. Malton's building, um, is very difficult for her. Um, I myself, too, have literally crawled into her building when I've thrown my back out. And I, and you see me, I'm standing tall now, but I literally crawled crying into the building and had to like need help getting up onto the table. So in order to, you need a chiropractic office on the first floor. You just can't do it on the second floor. I just can't. Um, the amount of foot traffic that Dr. Tracy brings to the downtown, downtown area is just unbelievable. And then you also meet people when you're in her building too and you start to talk to people, you find out how you have things in common um, and she ends up basically providing a huge network for a, a lot of individuals, myself included. So it would be really helpful if you could pass this tonight and we could make this a wellness center because it's going to bring a lot of traffic to the downtown area and it's going to help other business owners as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes. In the uh, yes, in the back, please. Thank you. Hello. My name is Anthony Morgillo. I'm at 1278 Durham Road. Dr. Moulton's my neighbor on 80, um, at 80 Center Street, so that she's at 100. I'd like to make a couple of points, but they've been made 10 times over, obviously. I know you guys are looking to revitalize downtown. And I think she would be an asset moving there. I know you're looking for retail and all of that on first floor buildings, but I have to ask you what kind of retail business would be sustainable in that building? She has a sustainable build business that will bring people into this town. Well, again, we're not talking about a specific building, sir. We're talking yeah, about, we're, we're talking about yeah, the entire zoning, town. But that's just the one point I had to make. Okay. Thank you. Other members from the public who would like to uh, speak on the application? Yes. Chris Shortell, 1A Casella Drive. Uh, I don't come to a lot of these meetings. I'm not even here for this, but uh, I don't envy any of you. You guys do a great job. So, um, And I do know that you've looked at your regs all the time. You're always analyzing them, and you've had workshops, and, and I respect that. This, um, and I do appreciate the willingness to me to compromise on this and try to find a way to make it work. My only thought is that, you, and I think you alluded to this, Mr. Fitzsimmons, about um, being here a while. You know, it, it, the downtown area, I mean, it's so different. I mean, Bolio's is gone. <laughs> Reliable hardware is gone. Milton's Men's Shop is gone. Uh, Sprafke's is gone. Um, what, do we have, what do we have right now? Uh, and how would, how would this fit in? Well, I mean, we have the, I look at Center Street, we have the Coalition for Better Wallingford. Great organization, but they occupy a storefront in this area. So I, I, I do have a sort of a issue with regulations that allow that, but they wouldn't allow this. We have the hubcap. Great, great thing. Is 
it's not really helping our businesses. Same, same, same point, all right? We allow that. We have real estate offices. You alluded to it. Uh, we have legal. And this, I know no one's going to like this. I, at this point in time, I would not care if I had a row of doctors on that street if it brought people into the center of town. I will do anything to bring people into the center of town. That's just how I feel. I'm not asking you to change that tonight, but I'm just, that's just, I, I just think we have to adjust our vision, especially post-COVID. Retail was dying before COVID, but it's definitely dying now. But again, I say this being ignorant of all the regulations, and you're all the experts, and I fully respect all the work you do, and no offense to any lawyers, but a lot of lawyers up there. Thank you. <laughs> I, would, I would remind you, Mr. Shortell, that we don't prohibit you know, if it's, uh, you know, medical offices or dental, we, we don't prohibit those in our downtown. What this really is focusing on is really on the first floor. Understood. But I would, I would stand by what I, if, no, I, the, I yeah, if the first floor were all medical and dental, today, that's, maybe years ago, I'd be like, I'd be with you. No, we don't want that. We want folios. We want them, but I just think those days are over. I just, that's what I worry about. But I appreciate the clarification. No, thank you. Other members from the public before I uh, come back to the commission. So at this point in time, I'll come back to the commission for any uh, suggestions, any ideas as far as, or any motions as far as how we'd like to handle the application. Uh, Mr. Cohen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, you know, I, I really listened very carefully to all the uh, comments from the public and really appreciate um, the comments that I heard. And I'm going to specifically mention the first gentleman who, bar my, <laughs> in my humble opinion, uh, phrase that, you know, this is visionary. This business, based on his uh, demographics, the changing population, this is a visionary decision. It's a visionary business. And, you know, we keep talking about changing with the times. This is it. And again, I think, um, and I actually agree with Mr. Chartel. <laughs> um, you know, I'd, I could see more medical offices in the downtown at some point. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, so again, I, I, I do support what we need to do to make this work. This is the future. This is visionary for, for us and for you. Thank you. Other commission members? Mr. Allenson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I was just looking over the um, design plan by uh, Lazarus and Sargent, and I'm looking at the just the footage on here, and I'm trying Mr. to... Else, if I, uh, sorry, I'm, I'm probably not loud enough. No, if I could just, again, we're, we're not looking... I don't want to get into the building, because we're not talking about the building and the and square footage of a particular building. What we're talking about is the entire town center area. So I, I, I would like to, you know, we've asked the applicant to stay away from that. And unless there's something really germane about your comment about the building, uh, I would, would ask you to move on if you would. I, I wouldn't be mentioning it if, it, if there wasn't. Okay. Um, the, the, what I'm looking at is I'm looking at our reg, I'm looking at the building, and I'm listening to what all of the folks from the public have said. And it's this this particular building is on two streets. It has two street sides, but other buildings may not. But our reg, the way it's written here, only prohibits first floor street side, and I think that is what was possibly not conveyed or not understood. So as I'm thinking about our downtown and looking at my picture of what the town center looks like and thinking about the street sides and building frontages versus the rest of the space of all of those buildings, 
I still think that medical, dental, chiropractic, and all of these uses can have first floor occupancy without occupying the street side fronts. That's all I'm trying to say, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Sure. Anyone else? Okay, with this, uh, I guess I would again just, yes, Mr. Fitzsimmons, help me out here. I'm a little shy, Mr. Chairman. Oh, not you. <laughs> Um, I, 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 <laughs> I'd, I'd like to be on record. I, I'm, I'm in support of what you do, Dr. Belton. I, I think it, it's, it's important. Um, I heard everyone, I agree with uh, Councillor Shortell and others, I mean, we're not going to bring back old Wallingford into the downtown. I, I think what um, Commissioner Allison was referring to is the uniqueness of your property. But I, I, I can't get there because I all I can think about is everyone else. And I think that's what I, I want to so if I could, Mr. Chairman, I would I would make this proposal. I'm in favor of adding the definition of wellness center. I just like somehow in there to include the term licensed. These individuals all have to be licensed. I'm in favor of the parking requirement. Where I get hung up is the um, current section four point two six and a question through the applicant through you, Mr. Chairman. Why can't, why didn't you ask just for a wellness center to be in the first floor? I'm sorry, why didn't I, I ask for just a wellness center? To be in the first floor. She did. I, I, no, because the change of the regulations that... That, that, was, that was not her change. Oh, sorry. Okay. Is that correct? Right. Yes, that's yes. correct. If, if, if you remember then the original application uh, we proposed originally is to eliminate... First of all, the uh, the section uh, and in the, or I should say or in the alternate, basically to have the wellness center, and we prepared a definition based on a review of various th throughout the country so-called definitions of wellness center, but tried to narrow the scope of it as much as we could, so that uh, it wouldn't wouldn't be a hodgepodge. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I, I, I just, I, I think the difficulty for me is the impact of the zone versus your individual parcel, you know, and, and, and I said at the beginning, the reason you're here is for you, sir. I think we could work on this and, and maybe come up with a, a, maybe a potentially separate definition or a revision or, you know, based upon the feedback. I, you know, Mr. Chairman, as you know, you've, made the application, we could leave the hearing open, you could work with town staff, you could take the feedback and maybe come back. I, I, I want to be very clear, I'm in favor of a wellness center, but I can't get into the particulars of your building because that's not what you're asking for. Because if we change the regulations, then you make an application. But I think the regulation impacts all of the area. So that, that's where I would be in favor. I think there's something here that you could revise and come back if we left the public hearing open based upon the feedback we've given you and the public. But that'd be my own suggestion, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Fitzsimmons. I, I, that would clearly be my suggestion, too. As I said, I, I, I have nothing, I, I'm not focusing on your building. I'm focusing on our downtown, and I'm focusing on a use to perhaps include a new use into this downtown area for all, for anyone and everyone who wanted to make uh, make avail of that or avail themselves of that and again the wellness center I think as Mr. Fitzsimmons indicated is something that I, I think there needs to be some work between in the language uh, between you and our corporate council and I think the, the Commission needs to give some guidance to our corporate council uh, but I, that's something that I would I would support. You know, going back to you know, the other the dental medical offices, the dental or in medical offices clinics on the first floor. That's something that I I don't support. And quite frankly, I'm not sure if you folks support it at all. In that it was a suggestion that was given to you, so I won't you know, let you comment on that. You don't need to comment on that. But if you would, you can. Uh, Dr. Malpin, would you please uh, comment? I'm not sure exactly. So you're saying that that you're saying that we we should be on the second floor? No, 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 no. What I no what I'm saying is the the medical dental offices clinics that's 
you know, right. proposed by a by the regulation change that was proposed to you folks. That's something that I can't support. What I can support, though, is a wellness center, okay, a well-defined wellness center, uh, and have that being allowed on the first floor. That's, I guess, that's. That's what I'm saying in a very clumsy way, apparently. Mr. Okay, Mr. Chair, if I could uh, possibly uh, maybe clarify. Basically, that uh, what you're looking for is to refer this, essentially, to con continue this matter, refer it to Corporation Council for, uh, for review on the language, uh, basically with some, with clean up language, uh, have the Corporation Council get back to myself, for example, and work together with the Corporation Council in uh, putting together language that would be more acceptable to the Commission. Yes, I think we need to give some, the Commission needs to give some guidance to the Corporation, to our Corporation Council as far as, you know, what we, our concerns may or may not be concerning what you've proposed. And then to have a conversation with, uh, you know, with the, uh, our, our corporate counsel, and she's indicated to me that that's certainly something that would uh, she would be agreeable to, and she, there's no reason why she wouldn't be. And then see, in fact, if we can, uh, you know, come to a uh, come to an agreement that works for the uh, you know works for the works for the town under its regulations. And Mr. Hine, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the only thing, uh, the only other thing I would add, um, if I may, is that if you can't come to some sort of agreement on the language. I wonder if we could make this a, a, a special permit uh, situation so that we then, because it sounds to me like everybody up here likes the idea of what is being proposed and, and would probably approve this particular business. We may not approve other businesses if it was a pure medical office on the first floor. Um, and that, you know, if we made it a special permit, that would, uh, that would then give us the ability to approve a business like this, but then maybe deny a, a, another business um, under c different circumstances. And I think that... Well, no, that I, I think that's, that's certainly an approach we could use, but I think we have to come first to an to a general idea of how we define a wellness center, how that may or may not be defined. Does that seem to be a workable thing for uh, commission members? I take it the applicant would not have a uh, uh, any any problem with continuing this uh, application uh, to our uh, to our next meeting, which would be oh, it's November. November. Okay. Yes. Uh, no. No, no objection. Okay, I guess in this particular point, then I'd uh, entertain a motion to continue the application to our uh, November meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move the commission continue the application for a zoning regulation change to section 4.26 as submitted by Atlas One LLC and Dr. Tracy Malton um, uh, to our November meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Cohan. All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Anybody abstained? Thank you very much. Hopefully we'll see you uh, next month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on, uh, new business item number four, it's a site plan, second story addition, United Concrete Products, 173 Church Street, Yalesville. Again, if the applicant and or his uh, representative please come forward to uh, begin preparing for the presentation. And Mr. Allenson, if you would please note all correspondence for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm having trouble with this mic switch. We have a site plan dated December 9th, 2014. A site plan date, uh, dated March 9th, 2007, revised September 28th, 2020. An interdepartmental referral from our fire marshal dated September 15th, 2020. A memorandum from the Department of Engineering dated September 22nd, 2020. An interdepartmental referral from 
Is that a deputy fire marshal? It is September 30th, 2020. Correspondence from Thomas Talpit, interim town planner, to Frank Giordano, dated September 29th, 2020. And a memorandum to the Planning and Zoning Commission from the Department of Engineering, dated October 14th, 2020. And I believe that concludes the documents. Thank you, Mr. Allison. And again, if the applicant uh, would uh, please introduce himself and begin his presentation. Uh, good evening. My name is Frank Giordano. I'm the construction manager for United Concrete Products. Um, we're proposing, uh, we have a, a 62,000 square foot facility on 173 Church Street. We're proposing to add two conference rooms, a 1,500 square foot conference room on a second story that is nested in sort of the center of the building. It's actually, it's on top of the oldest section of the building, so it's got a lower, lower roof. And that conference room would be nested sort of in the center of the building here. Um, it's actually in between like three roofs. And a first floor conference room of 800 square feet that is on the, on the basically in the parking lot. Um, the purpose for the addition is we need, we want to add more space to our conference room uh, due to, we can't, uh, it's too crowded in there, so we've got to give more space. Um, we also wanted to add a second egress out of our, our second story office. Um, and we started with that and, and as a, um, pretty much, we, we um, right now the, our facility is closed to the public. We have a tent set up where we meet with contractors. We pretty much have decided we're probably gonna keep it that way. So we're gonna have a redundant conference room, basically separated from the building. Um, we're going to keep the building as just employee access um, and basically have that separation uh, where we bring outside people in. Um, seems a better way to handle it. And uh, we're just, uh, it, it, because of all, it's definitely, what's going on with COVID has definitely impacted our business. It makes it more difficult basically to conduct business and we don't want to put our employees at risk. Uh, so that is the, um, that's really the, perp they're sort of redundant conference rooms, but I mean, we could have got away with one, um, but this seems to be the best approach for us. Thank you, sir. Is that the extent of your presentation? That, that is. Okay. Thank oh, you. I can show a, a layout. I mean, I do have a layout that was presented. Um, both uh, conference rooms are sort of identical. They have a restroom, a large table with a projection area, uh, and then two smaller areas for uh, plan review or where uh, Individuals could sit down face to face, review documents uh, on a smaller scale. Thank you, Commission members. With questions for the uh, for the applicant. Mr. Talbot, I, I know you had some questions for the applicant. I know we were received or some comments that you had, I believe. Um. And I just all, the question is if, they, of, if, they've, been, if comments, they've been addressed. All of my comments have been addressed. All of the uh, uh, town engineer's comments have been addressed. Her last set of comments has a recommendation that uh, the parking spaces that are shown on the plan that are along the building be moved six feet back out from the building. That should be made a condition. Uh, those would be comments dated, well, they're 10 14. Sir, did you receive these comments? I know we just received them today from our engineering. I, I did not receive right. them. Yeah, yeah. If, if, just if you, so you can take a look at the comments. There you go. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you. And, and we're talking, just so you know, we're talking about an area that's already paved. It's really just about restriping, so uh, I wouldn't recommend a bond for that. Sanitation Thank you. Thank you. 
Yeah, uh, I'm not. I guess I'm not sure exactly what the comment is because it. it <laughs> right. Oh, so for this, for the first car to move out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I, I don't. I. We don't object to that. At this point in time, this is not a public hearing, but we do offer members of the public to comment on most of our applications. Anyone in the pu any member of the public would like to uh, comment on the application, please come forward and name and address. Good evening. I'm Joe Mira with the Economic Development Commission. We just wanted a voice that we're in favor of this project. Thank you, sir. Any other members of the public? Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the applicant. If you'd like to make any final comments, you're certainly not obligated to. Seems like a fairly straightforward application. Uh, no, I, no, I don't really have any further comment. Okay, good. Thank you. I, I will make one comment. Um, this, th these changes here really don't um, impact the park. I mean, basically, these changes here are not adding any more employees. We're just trying to get, give us a much work, uh, better working situation for the employees we already have. Even though we're adding restrooms, we're not adding employees. We're just uh, basically we can't we can't run this conference room without an, a restroom. Uh, we wanted to add a restroom closer to the other conference room just from a logistics standpoint. So this isn't uh, pretty much adding any more employees or parking. Uh, it, it's it's just the make the operation more uh, usable and, and uh, better for our employees, basically. Good enough. Thank you very much, sir. Any members of the commission who would like, any make, uh, like to make any final comments? Uh, seeing none, I'd entertain a motion on the application. Mr. Chairman, I move the commission to approve a site plan for United Concrete Products to construct two building additions totaling 2,300 square feet as well as Revised parking plans at 173 Church Street as shown in plans entitled Property Boundary Survey depicting lot line revision between land of 173 Church Street, LLC, located at 173 Church Street, and land now informally, Yalesville Properties, LLC, located at 43 Warehouse Point Road, Yalesville, Connecticut, dated 3907, revised to 92820, subject to the, the last, those plans are 10 8. Oh, I'm sorry. Revised to 10-8. 10-8-20-20, subject to the following conditions. Number one, comments from the Thomas Talbot Town Planner to Frank Giordano, dated 9-29-20. Number two, comments from Allison Kapinski, Town Planner, Town, of Walling, Town Engineer, Town of Wallingford, in inter-office memorandum to the Planning and Zoning Office, dated 9-23-20 and 10-14-20. Number three, comments of the Wallingford Fire Marshal's um, Office, Michael Godelsky, in inter-office memorandum to the Planning and Zoning Department, dated 9-15-20. Thank you, Mr. Fitzsimmons. Do we have a second on the application? I'll second. Second by Mr. Cohan. Voting beginning with Mr. Cohan, please. Yes. 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 The application's been approved. Have a good evening, sir. Moves us on. Item number six is the site plan, a 600 square foot accessory apartment, J. Lee, 253 New Cheshire Road. Again, if the applicant would please come forward and begin preparing It'll for his presentation. And uh, Mr. Allison, if you would please note all correspondence for the record. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have an interdepartmental referral from our fire marshal dated September 15th, 2020. An interdepartmental referral from the town engineer dated September 15th, 2020. An interdepartmental referral from Register, dated September 15th, 2020. Correspondence from Thomas Talbot, Interim Town Planner, to John Jr. and Terry Lee, dated September 16th, 2020. And that concludes our documents. Thank you, Mr. Allison. If the applicant would please introduce himself and begin his uh, presentation, please. My name is John Lee, uh, 253 New Cheshire Road. I'm uh, <clears throat> just seeking uh, an accessory apartment. 
for my uh, residence. Okay. It's an existing garage. Excuse me? It's an existing garage and it's going to be above that. So you're going to convert that into a uh, into an accessory apartment, correct? Yes. Good. Thank you. It's above the garage. Just it's above the garage. Above the garage. Oh, okay. Uh, commission members, uh, any questions for the applicant? Mr. Talbot, any, any uh, I just, questions? I, I just have one comment. My comment about the parking uh, is not required. There's a there's something new in the regulations that I didn't know about, so the parking issue has been resolved. So my comments are null and void. Okay. So one of the issues, though, that would still need to be addressed uh, if we approve the application is just the health department approve the septic system. Is it's that the correct? health department, yes. As well as then a final inspection by a zoning enforcement officer? That's what you do. Again, any members of the public who would like to comment on the application, please come forward and name an address. Seeing none, I'll bring it back to the commission for any final comments before we entertain a motion on the application, unless you'd like to make some final comments. I'm good. 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 <laughs> I appreciate that. He knows. <laughs> hey, when you're on a roll, don't. <laughs> uh, at this point in time, uh, there's no further comments from the commission members. I'd entertain a motion on the application. Mr. Chairman, I move the commission approve a site plan for Lee for a 700 square foot accessory apartment at 253 New Cheshire Road, subject to number one, comments in an inter-office memorandum from the Wallingford Health Department to Thomas Talbot Planner, dated 9-15-20, and two, final inspection of the completed accessory apartment by the Town of Wallingford Zoning Enforcement Officer. Thank you, Mr. Fitzsimmons. We have a motion on the application. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Cohan. Voting beginning with Mr. Cohan. Yes. 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 And yes, the application has been approved, sir. Have a good evening. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, Mr. Talbot, I'm going to leave the rest of the agenda to you. We'll move down to new number seven, which is uh, the, uh, I guess, the proposed bond release and or reduction for Cho Rosemary Hall. Yeah, uh, that bond is ready to be released. We have a motion to release the uh, Choate Rosemary Hall bond for 333 Christian Street as recommended by our acting town planner. Mr. Chairman, I move the commission to approve the release of the bond we're currently holding for Choate Rosemary Hall 333 Christian Street um, as recommended by the town planning office. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Cohan. Voting beginning with Mr. Hine. Yes. 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 And yes. And if we move on, please. Uh, number eight. This is number eight and number nine are uh, items that were put on the agenda at the request of the. Chair. Sure. I guess I, I would talk on, on on I guess on number eight. Uh, just for general information, there was a, uh, a a committee put together, actually spearheaded by uh, Councillor Shortell. Uh, looking at our zoning regulations and, and looking also with some uh, some areas with the count, town council has purview over as far as uh, looking to uh, address or, or help businesses in, in particular uh, restaurants given the COVID-19 and the impacts that that's had as far as with outside dining uh, and one of the items that came up uh, was suggested, actually I believe it was by Mr. Talbot, to look to, uh, as businesses want to you know, perhaps uh, continue with outside dining and even maybe expand their outside dining, uh, one of the issues that could be a constraint would be once the governor's executive orders are expired, you know, would be uh, parking and, and taking up uh, additional parking spaces that then would not put them in compliance. You know, it was suggested that our, and again, Mr. Talbot, you can jump in here if I'm saying anything incorrect, but, you know, our zoning regulations for restaurants take in the total square footage of a restaurant, and that generates the parking requirement. What's being suggested here was to look at the, to use the seating capacity of the restaurant, because that's where generally the majority of the people who are coming into the restaurant uh, are going to be. They're going to be the... Uh, uh, the, the, the uh, people uh, looking for services from the restaurant, the customers. Uh, so to look and consider using the square footage of the seating area to calculate our parking requirement, you know, that may 
may be a small thing, may be a big thing. You know, it may, be, it, it may provide some additional space for, you know, restaurants that are looking to, you know, continue with or expand their outside dining. So that's why we, we have it here as a discussion item, if that's something that the Commission wants to, uh, you know, uh, consider and uh, look to, you know, change our zoning regulations uh, in order to accommodate that. And again, I know I kind of stumbled through it, Mr. Talbot, which I always do. So with that, if you have any... Uh, Comments that you'd like to make or correct anything I've said. No, please no, feel no, free. no, no, no. Except, that, except to point out that this wouldn't include the town center. I'd had that. That that would be something else again. You have a different set of parking regulations for that. Hmm. Reducing that would have to be would be an additional look at, I guess. But but I, it, the only other thing I wanted to add is what what is being proposed here is a very common standard, not just the means by which. Um, uh, uh, you're regulating restaurant parking, but that actual standard. But for some, for some reason, Wallingford has always included the whole area. And if you're talking about the typical restaurant, you, in many cases, you can be talking about a reduction of a third, up to a third, depending on how much uh, 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 prep area, kitchen area, storage area. Uh, typically, those things are not figured into a, uh, to a, a parking requirement. But here they are, and it's been a problem. It, Sort of problem back in the day, but but this is just a, a, a way to address that. Thank you, Mr. Talbot. Any commission members would like to comment? Mr. Fitzsimmons. Mr. Chairman, I fully support this request, um, and it's our own amendment, correct? So we it would, yes. notice it for next month? Yeah, if, if we're all in agreement, okay. this is something we'd like to do. I would uh, yeah. advise that we would put it on our agenda for, uh, for next month. I know we have some members of the public here. I'm Certainly. Uh, oh, Mr. Hine, I'm sorry. Uh, no, Excuse no, me. that's okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The only question I had here, I just made a note, uh, is what about employees? Uh, so, if if you if you gear it towards customer seating, standing, or dancing no. area, um, I mean, does it make a difference? I don't know. Um, uh, Mr. I, Talbot, I, if you'd like to uh, respond, I I don't think so. I mean, first of all. It's it's really no different than our than no because most of your employees in a restaurant are in fact going to be in the customer service area at some point. There are some people in the kitchen, but the standard that particular standard is meant to include staff and employees. It's not yeah, and and I just want to be clear. I'm I'm for this, but I just want to make sure I ask the question. So yeah, that, no, I. Right get the answer. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else? Again, I know we have some members of the public who would like to speak. Please come forward and name an address. Chris Hortel, 1A Casella Drive. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, Mr. Talbot. Uh, this is part of an ongoing discussion that started, as, as you alluded to, uh, Mr. Chairman, we, the Ordinance Committee at the Town Council, we expanded the sidewalk dining time frame for it, but it, that was just the first step, and, and then I, I came to you, and you, you've been very supportive, and Mr. Talbot, Chairman Cervoni, uh, and Tim Ryan is here, I think, and so is Kathy, so they'd like to speak uh, as well, um, but this is this would be a great thing, I think, uh, again, thinking post-COVID. Mm -hmm. um, anything we can do, and you had suggested the parking requirement being a barrier, but even beyond that, anything we can do to let these restaurants continue. One of the questions that we got was, and I think it was a fair question, was, well, is this a solution in search of a problem? So, what Mr. Ryan and what Kathy Lee and I did, mostly them, I only hit a few restaurants, we, we went through a list of restaurants that applied for an, a permit currently, and we went out and talked to them over the last two weeks to get feedback. And we asked them a very simple question. We said, once COVID is over with, you are at 100% capacity, would you still want to do what you're doing with outdoor dining? So if you're wooden tap, would you still want the big tent in the side parking lot, if you're whatever? So we have the results, and I, I don't want to speak to them too much because I only talked to four restaurants. I got off easy when they're writing up the list. I just kept my mouth shut, and they kept saying, I'll take that one, I'll take that one. But, but Mr. Ryan and, and, and Ms. Lilly can, can give you a better insight, but I'll just give you a, a spoiler alert. They all want it. And there's some specifics that I think they should talk about in terms of 
uh, just just the dynamics of it from the tents and different things. But I guess the, the last thing I would say, so so two two things quickly. Um, so I hope this is an ongoing thing. Whatever we can do, you have my support. You have the council. So I can't speak for the council, but you have the council support. And if it means going back to that other ordinance, we can go back to the other ordinance for for the downtown. Whatever we need to do, we just want to get it done, and we want to we just want to move on it as quickly as we can. And I appreciate you are moving on it quickly because you, you we're here tonight. So I'm grateful for that. So with that, I will yield, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Good. Enough. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Kathy Lilly. I'm the new executive director of Wallingford Center, Inc. I live at 27 Southview Drive here in Wallingford. So um, a couple of us did reach out to the restaurants in town. And um, so far, we've spoken to 22 of the restaurants that requested permits. And the response from these restaurants has all been a resounding yes, we want to do this again. It's been fabulous for us. Our uh, customers all enjoyed sitting outside. They realized why are we, all, why are we sitting inside in this gorgeous weather, having an, um, a meal or a drink with our friends, and they all want to continue. And we realized that people had tables placed in areas where they don't normally have them and they shouldn't probably have them. But going forward, if we could, um, or if you guys could um, come together and work on um, getting it, these, this additional seating approved, uh, some of the comments we heard from restaurants were, it, was so, it went so well for us that when the, our tent guy spoke to us about taking back his tent, we decided to purchase it instead. Um, there are restaurants that said, oh my God, if I had a little notice, I would have done a really nice area like a European cafe. And if you can tell me now that I can do that in the spring, I'll have a beautiful outside area. Several said that. So um, just going forward, we. Um, we'll continue to reach out to the restaurants we didn't get to, but we spoke to 22, or we reached out to 22, 19 responded, 18 of them said absolutely they would do it again. One restaurant that had an existing patio but did additional seating said that they would probably not do the additional tables out in their parking lot because it took up parking spaces but they would just move those tables back into their patio again. So basically everyone was for it. Uh, the residents in town all appeared to like it. If anyone drove by through downtown any night of the week, there were people dancing outside. Um, and it was a very vibrant downtown. So any questions? I have a question, but I think I'll let Mr. Ryan speak, and then I'll have a question for Mr. Talbot. Very good. Good evening again, Tim Ryan, Economic Development Commission. I think the fundamental premise, first I want to, I want to thank Council Shortell for bringing this conversation up and getting it started. I want to thank Chair Seichter for, for being involved and, and being open-minded enough to just say, let's talk this thing out. The fundamental premise here is that something, you know, COVID gave us this opportunity, and it works. It's working. It's working for the businesses. It's working for people. People like it. People like go, we're eating outside. They're, they're enjoying it. So, I mean, it, it's helped strengthen the fabric of who we are when it comes to the fact that people can enjoy these experiences. We find ourselves saying, okay, so we're government. What are we going to do? We're we going to sit around and try to figure out ways not to let it happen? I mean, we can come up with parking reasons, public safety reasons, but I will tell you, I personally called nine different departments, chief of police, fire marshal, um, public health, mayor's office, the mayor supports this. Um, uh, let's see, who else? Engineering, because engineering is involved with parking. Public works, because they help put the barriers up in Simpson Court. The risk manager for the town of Wallingford. And the question I asked every single one of them was, 
A, have there been any complaints, issues, or problems that have resulted from having outdoor dining to the extent that we have it? It was, in fact, one complaint, uh, and it was a, from someone who said that they could not pass uh, in front of Archie Moore's. There was a, they said the sidewalk was pinched too much. They did not have six feet of spacing. And our building official went over to Archie Moore's and said, sneak the tables in a little bit so we have six feet. That's fine. The next question I asked them is, if, if, would you support the continuation of the outdoor dining in a post-COVID scenario? And every one of them resoundingly said yes. So we, we have risk officers whose job is to basically say no to almost anything that you know, presents any level of risk, saying yes. We have public safety officials, police chiefs, fire marshal. Yes, yes. So I think now the ball's in our court. I mean, we, we've got a great outcome that, that's happened with outdoor dining. And whatever it is you folks need to do <laughs> to take and allow it to continue, I would certainly appreciate your, your consideration because I think it's been great for the town, not just helping the businesses survive, but, it, but it, again, it adds another dimension to coming to downtown Wallingford and, and well beyond. I mean, the, we have businesses, you know, up and down Route 5 that are thriving because of this and continue to, you know, people enjoy the experience. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Ryan. I, I guess I have a, a question for you, Mr. Talbot. With this, if you could take a look at our, 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 tent, our temporary tents or our tent requirement, because I know we have regulations concerning putting up temporary tents. So it, it would seem, I, I believe we do, and I'm sure Mr. Fitzsimmons will let me know if we don't. Uh, and I think there's you know, some restrictions as far as the amount of time. So I think that you know, we need to look at that also you know, to uh, look to address that issue. So you know, we're... Okay, but just so everybody's clear here, this thing, this regulation amendment you're talking about today is only a very, it's a very limited thing. Oh, we understand. And that. that's not going to get you to the kind of thing that was being discussed subsequent to our, our discussion about it. So the, I, I, I just want that to be... Well, no, I, I think it's, no, I, I, I think clear. that... It's a first step. It's, it's No, a, it's a first step. It may allow businesses who want to, you know, who... With a reduction in parking, they'll be able to comply with the parking, and they'll give them, a, and they'll be able to use some additional parking spaces to look to, uh, you know, create some outside dining. My qu my question is, do our current regulations, with respect to tents, does that because if, if it's only you can only have a tent up for 15 days or something like that, whatever it may be, we need to look at that. Okay. and address that issue so we're not stumbling around someone puts a tent up someone goes to the outside dining then we come and say aha you have to take the tent down because it can only be up for 15 days we need to look at that to make sure that that is not a stumbling block with this sure. that's all i'm trying to okay mention anyone else mr allenson thank you thank you mr chairman um i think this is an, a wonderful idea i'm wholly in supportive of it Going along your line of thinking, Mr. Chairman, with the tents and this being the first step and see, looking at subsequent issues, I think we may also want to look at our temporary signage regulations as far as whether it's referring to outdoor dining or how that may impact this to also give the businesses more opportunity. I just think it may be something we want to consider. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's a good suggestion. I believe, Mr. Ryan, you wanted to make one further comment. Yes, I'm, sorry. I'm, not look, I'm not looking at the clock. But. Yeah, I'm sorry. I was remiss in not mentioning that um, food trucks at the wineries are included in this whole activity. I know we have talked about that at length at these meetings, but both of the wineries have, have uh, again, zero complaints. But both of the wineries are, are on board and would love to continue the, uh, the use of food trucks. Thank you. I think again, I think that needs to be a discussion, you know, with you know, with the commission also to see if that's something that we are, you know, in favor of that would at least like to propose allowing food trucks at wineries, whether it that be on a, you know, a limited basis, a, a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or the whole whatever. So, I guess let's open that up for a discussion so we can have some direction on that also. Mr. Cohen. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm fine with this. The, the question I have is about the tents. Um, and I'm trying to think of 
the last time that I had, uh, you know, dinner or lunch in a in a restaurant, and it, I don't think I've eaten inside a restaurant since this whole thing began. I've certainly gone to a few places outside <clears throat> and not really sat in a tent. There's there's been some type of uh, you know shelter ahead, uh, but but I guess my concern is you know the type of tent. And if the tent is enclosed, you know, it's, it's really not too much different than, um, you know, being inside, you know, a normal restaurant. Um, so I'm, I'm just wondering, you know, how to handle that, you know, with folks inside that tent, whether they, you know, have to social distance, um, you know, inside, you know, an enclosed tent. Most of the tents I saw in Wallingford were, you know, open air. It was just, you know, the top of the tent. Um, so I think that's something that, uh, you know, we'd have to consider. I think, I think that's a good point, but uh, what was it, not last, what was the day it rained really hard? Not, was it yesterday? Yesterday. It yeah. rained, it rained, it, it hauled the day to yesterday. It, 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 rained the from me. it rained extremely hard, and uh, my wife and I went to Colony Diner. We sat in the tent. It was still raining, but it was nice. You could even see the trains going by a little bit. Uh, they had a heater there, and, uh, and and again, I think you know we're talking beyond you know COVID nineteen exactly. also, exactly. but just with with COVID, I mean the all the the tables were all spaced out because, and I don't want to speak for our health department or, or our fire marshal, whomever, but I believe they've gone out and inspected. Uh, the tents to make certain that they, you know, are complying with all safety issues. Like, again, like at Colony Diner, the same thing. I, I know it, uh, I won't say for certain it, it wouldn't tap, but Colony Diner, you know, they have the required uh, fire extinguishers and all of that. Uh, so uh, clearly I believe that the, uh, you know, the fire marshal has gone out and inspected, you know, these, uh, these tents. And, you know, before the little bit more in inclement weather, cooler weather, you know, most of the tents, uh, you know, had, you know, their sides up where now, you know, it gets a little bit cooler, a little more windy. Some of them have heaters inside, uh, which I'm sure are all approved by our, our fire marshal. So, you know, I, I found it to be a, a very comfortable uh, atmosphere. My wife wanted another blanket, but anyhow. Mr. Do it in Europe. <laughs> Um, just I got the regulation book out, and the uh, mobile food vendor uh, is is all over our regs because it does it, we do limit, um, but I don't think it'll affect the uh, the wineries. But we probably should look at the second one. Its first one says will not be located parked in a property for more than ten consecutive days. I don't think that's an issue. It's the second one will not be located parked in a property for more than twenty days in any three hundred sixty five day. So I would propose we talk about that in. November, if possible, for a change to extend that. A discussion, is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, no, I think that's a good idea. And then uh, regarding regarding the tents, my, my, my recollection of the tents, and I couldn't find it in here, it, you know, our, our tent regs, I know and I, I recall, were related to the tents that they put up to sell Easter flowers, the tents they set up to sell fireworks, the tents that they use at a church carnival. So... Yeah, and, and it's, so that's where we kind of have focused on the tent regs, but I don't recall, I'm still looking, I don't recall a limit. Um, well, I just, yeah. the only thing is I just want to make sure that, of course. that, that that's not a, that that's not a hang up, that, you yeah. know, we approve something and then it's, oh, now we yeah. have to go back on something. So if we're going to, Agreed. you know, do something, let's make sure that we've, we've covered, uh, we've covered all the areas. Yep. Anyone else? Seeing no one else. Uh, I, I guess as far as the direction, uh, as far as the uh, restaurant parking requirements, I think we're in agreement to have that on our agenda uh, as a uh, public hearing for a regulation change, and then dropping down to, you know, the other area uh, as far as uh, food trucks at wineries that would be put on our agenda as a discussion item. Does that everyone agree with that? Sure. Okay, moving on. We're getting down to number uh, number nine, which is the IX, IXI-5 uh, regulation amendments. 
you know, I've asked Mr. Talbot to include this in our, our packet uh, for a, uh, you know, for a discussion or, or just to make commission members, you know, aware of that if they'd like to make any comments right now. You know, we had uh, a workshop uh, quite some time ago uh, concerning making some changes to our I-5 IX regulations. Uh, Mrs. Hand, before she uh, resigned her, her position, uh, marked this, you marked up the regulations, marked up the changes, and that's what we, you know, that's what we have here. What I'd like to do is, if people would like to discuss any specific things on these regulations, certainly we can do that tonight, but I would like to have this on our agenda uh, for next month or uh, if, if we're looking to, uh, you know, as a public hearing to see if we want to, in fact, change or change the regulations that we have, make the, make the modifications to the regulations. So, again, I'm not sure if commission members have had the opportunity to, you know, look at some of these changes. Again, most of them were discussed, and it's an incorporation of what was discussed at a workshop uh, earlier this year. So, again, I leave it open to... Uh, you know, to the commission members, I know there may be some members of the public that would like to comment on this. So, first, I just ask any for any comment. Yes, Mr. Hine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so there were, from my recall uh, from the workshop, and it, it was, <laughs> you are correct, it was some time ago, um, thanks to COVID. But uh, you know. One of the things that we had raised was making a warehousing um, a special permit in the I-5 zone, uh, which it looks like was done. But then there was another um, um, issue that had come up as we were discussing all of this, and that was that um, there were certain activities um, that were not permitted in the I-5 zone because... Uh, there was uh, so uh, so many of the properties included wetlands in that zone, and I had raised the, the the question as to whether those same restrictions um, should be um, extended over to the I X zone for the properties in that zone that included wetlands. Um, Casey was going to follow up with. Um, the water and sewer division um, and get back to, to me as to whether it was that department's view that those, those limitations should be extended. And I don't know, I never heard back from her. I don't know where that conversation went. I don't know if any of that is incorporated into these uh, new revisions. Um, and I, I don't want to lose sight of that. I, I, I do want to get that issue addressed before. Sure, and I appreciate it. I know that there was, and, and unfortunately I can't give you that answer right now. I know that there were, that there was some discussions between Mrs. Han, uh, I believe, and the, uh, and the water, uh, water department. And I don't want to put anyone from the EDC on the spot, but if they have any insight into that, I, I would, certainly, uh, would certainly appreciate that insight. And I see Mr. Ryan coming to the microphone. To the best of my knowledge, the document that you have, that uh, is the same document that I have, is a um, in, in result of the collaboration between Eric Kruger, who is the chief engineer of Water Sewer, and uh, Casey, uh, Casey Hand. So, and it has to do with watershed as opposed to wetlands. It's, it's a watershed regulation. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. It, 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 yeah. I, I, Thanks for that clarification. Uh, it was the watershed, um, and I, I just want to know what the answer was. Uh, you know, to that. Uh, you, know, you know, I could take a look at these things, but I, 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 it still does not give me a clear answer as to what the result of that conversation was. I, I think that perhaps the way we can, you know, resolve that is uh, looking for, if we bring this forward to a public hearing, looking for comments from you know, the water and sewer department and for some, uh, for their comments and, and to make certain that what is here that they feel comfortable with. I think that would certainly be appropriate. I would suspect, you know, we would normally, you know, send it out, uh, you know, send it out anyway. Other uh, commission members? 
Mr. Talbot, I see you look a little perplexed. Well, I, just wanna, so I, I just want to be clear. You want all of this on as a public hearing item? Uh, well, I don't think we just want to put part of it. No. You want section 4.9, 4.10, and the watershed also. You want 4.13. That's my question. Yeah. All, all of them. Is that, is, that what is that what commission members would like to see? I believe so. Okay, with that, I don't, any, yeah, I know, any other members of the commission would like to comment? Seeing none, then go out to the uh, gentleman here. Thank you. Um, Bob DeMeo, 14 Murray Lane. I appreciate Commissioner Hine bringing that, uh, the topic back up about the uh, workshops, which I was at um, earlier in the year, and um, I do think that watershed issue is critical. I know there was some back and forth with KC, and in fact, there was a letter, I think, dated February 4th from the Public Utilities uh, commission and the water division saying, hey, you know, we don't recommend storage, warehousing in the watershed in the I-5. And then subsequent to that, questions around, hey, well, these are neighboring, you know, zones. You know, why one foot here versus here, and how are we going to deal with that from a legal perspective, et cetera. I would just, I'm thankful you guys are going to bring that forward. I am extremely concerned about our watershed. I think it would be a huge mistake put any storage facilities, manufacturing facilities, warehousing in that watershed, any more than there already is. So I'll look forward to the meeting next month. Good. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Mr. Ryan and then you, sir. Tim Ryan, Economic Development Office. You know, in, in our attempt to evaluate the, the, the proposed regulation change as amendments, we say to ourselves as economic developers, well, we're not really qualified to and, and don't understand all of the engineering language and the aquifer language. And, uh, but obviously, I mean, quite obviously, we want to protect the watershed as much as everybody else. We live here, we drink the water, et cetera. So the litmus test that I would ask that you consider is we have a number of companies, quite a few companies, who are you know, active, actively doing business in the watershed quite successfully. We have none that, uh, that I'm aware of, uh, and this is after talking to the water department, that we would earmark and say, boy, we wish this company wasn't here. So we, we have a group of companies functioning quite well in the watershed that are not doing, you know, any harm to the watershed. And I would say that if we take a look at the new regulations, and then ask ourselves if any one of those companies that we right now are, are very happy that they're here and they're, they're doing business well without doing any damage to the watershed, if these new regulations would disallow them to come to town if they were to come in today with a new application, I would say that we'd have to pause and relook at the regulations. All right, so again, we all want to protect the watershed, but it's a matter of we don't understand how deeply we protect it until such time as we have an application that may be a good application that may get denied. So I think we can, we can use our experience in that functioning companies that are contributing to town, not contributing to any type of issues or challenges in the watershed, take new regs, and I'm not sure who does that, because I certainly am not qualified to do it, but just that's the litmus test. If they would be allowed to come if they were applying today, then these are probably good regs. If they would be denied, I would think that we would pause and say, okay, we have to understand why they would be denied. Thank you. I think that's a, you know, certainly that's, that's an approach we can take. But again, you know, uh, Mr. Ryan, as you said, who's going to do that? Uh, that uh, I'm, I'm not sure if we have, and I'm saying we being the planning department, has staff certainly to be able to do that. I know that there are, you know, numerous applications that are coming in. You know, we have staffing constraints. So uh, I guess I would raise the question, is that something that the Economic Development Commission could do? Well, I don't know how to apply these regulations. So, um, Tom, any ideas as to how we, can, we could possibly... I'm not even like that? sure what exactly you're talking about, to be quite honest, at this point. I mean, I, what is it that you want? What is it that you're looking well, all, for? I'm, all I'm suggesting is that, you know, passing regulations without being able to take and, and compare them to success stories that are out there now. For example, if there's a, there are companies in the watershed along Research Parkway that are there, that are functioning properly, that are not harming the watershed, they're good companies, we're glad they're there, 
but if that same company was to apply under these new watershed regulations and they would, they would not be allowed to come in, I would submit that the regulations may be too stringent. If Mr. Talbot, could, could you please put your mask on? Thank you. Yeah. So I think, I think else? there needs to be some sort of litmus test to take and, and make the comparison. I mean, we can talk, can talk to Eric Kruger if you want, but uh, otherwise, uh, how else do you know? I mean, it would involve gathering, I guess, some. It would be anecdotal information. I, I, I'm not sure how much of it would be. It would be mainly qualitative, as opposed to quantitative, I guess. But I, I guess you could do something. But it would. It would involve some time and some work. And I just, you know, from an economic development standpoint, we're asked to opine on regulations that. We don't necessarily understand the depth and, and, and the application. So um, I'm just saying that would be one way of, of doing no, it. I, again, I, I appreciate it. I, I think that if we're going to do that, we have to work out how it's going to be done. And, and I, I think I'm hearing from Mr. Talbot, which I would agree with, I'm not certain <coughs> that he has the time to do that, given the additional applications that have been coming in and given the fact that you know, he's not, he's not full-time. So. His time is, is certainly, uh, I think, very well booked. So that might be something, again, you, the Economic Development Commission, perhaps with the water and, you know, water and sewer, and, and perhaps on a very ancillary level, Mr. Talbot, you, you folks can come up with some idea how to go about doing that. I think it's, it's certainly very beneficial to do, uh, but I think there's going to, we're going to have to be creative in our, who is going to, Shepherd this along. See if we can put our heads together. Exactly. Before November. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Or, you know, if it can't be done before November, then, you know, that's something that certainly it, it's December, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. whatever. Sure. I think that's it's an important issue that you raise, so I think it needs to be addressed, and if it takes more time to address it, it takes more time to address it. Agreed. Agreed. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just, yes, this gentleman. <sighs> My name is John Keogh. I'm a commercial real estate broker with Colliers International. And for the last 10 years or so, I've been working with the Gillespie uh, D'Amelio family, which owns property 23 acres at 677 Williams Road in the I-5 zone. Um, we've been trying to sell the property and Basically, the only allowable use in that zone now is office buildings. Uh, there's been no time in the last 10 years when it was economically viable to develop the property as an office building. Um, so, the um, Kristen D'Amelio, who's the, the sole trustee of the entity that owns the property, enthusiastically supports expanding the allowable uses in the zone so that she can sell her property and move on. Um, and obviously that would benefit the town in that um, you would get tax revenue from property that's paying virtually no tax currently. Your, your current regulations allow uh, you could probably put a 200,000 square foot office building with all the cars, et cetera, et cetera. That's going to cause a lot more um, potential damage to the watershed than, for instance, a warehousing and distribution facility would because you're not going to have near, the, the warehousing and distribution won't have nearly as much traffic. Um, there are methods by which stormwater can be managed now um, in a way that would not adversely impact the watershed. And I would like to see the town adopt regulations that allow the intelligent and um, productive development of the property. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Mr. T uh, yes. My name's Ed Homan. My name's Ed Homan. I'm from 12 Marie Lane. My question is, if we're looking at the IX and the companies there are not having any issues, 
with the watershed. Can they not be grandfathered in? And any of the new uh, restrictions apply only to the newer people apply, uh, applying for the land currently now? Well, I believe if they're, if that would be, they would, correct again, correct me if I'm wrong, Mr. Talbot, but they would be pre-existing, so they would be allowed to operate. Now, if it came to expanding, that may create an issue, but uh, if the regulations change, uh, however they complied with the regulations, you know, at the time they received their approval, you know, they would be able to continue to, uh, to operate. The expansion may become an issue, though. I know some of the towns, it varies. The buffer zone, 100 feet, 250 feet from the watershed for a building. So I don't know if that's part of the changes that may occur, too, you know, depending upon the impact on the watershed. But the grandfathering of it, it would, would work for those companies. Why should they leave? They've been here all along. We've had, never had a problem with it. But the newer people coming in could be an issue. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Talbot, I believe you're going to make some comments or, or no? Okay. Anyone, uh, anyone else from the commission? I, I think the, yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Uh, Cohen, please. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <laughs> very interesting conversation about the watershed. And, uh, you know, I don't know how anyone can make the comment that, uh, you know, all the businesses operating in the watershed are, you know, doing okay. Um, I, I'd like to see what sources, you know, that comment originates from. We certainly have businesses within the watershed where we go out and inspect but not every single business. Um, so, you know, I, I, I don't know if that's something that, uh, you know, the uh, town engineer, uh, not town engineer, Eric Kruger, the water and sewer guy, um, whether they inspect anything on, you know, other businesses within the watershed. Certainly they test the water coming into, uh, you know, our reservoirs. Um, there was a algae bloom just recently at Mackenzie Res, which, you know, could have been caused by, you know, some business upstream. We don't know. But, uh, you know, to, to make that comment, I think, is a bit presumptuous. Um, you know, without some, you know, documentation behind it. Sure. Well, you know, I, I think that, you know, whatever we approve from a regulation, we, we want to make certain that, you know, the water and sewer complies with what the water and sewer is uh, requiring. I think that that's, you know, that that's certainly key. With that, anyone else? And believe it or not, I believe that no, we still have some more items. We have reports from staff. Uh, we're moving on to the ZBA decisions of uh, September 21st. Anyone have any comments on the decisions? If not, ZBA notices for the October 19th meeting. Does anyone like to make some comments on that? Seeing none, we'll move on to the zoning enforcement log. Anyone with any comments on that? It looks smaller, so good job. Anyone else? Seeing none, I think that brings us to the end of the meeting, unless there's any other items to come. Yes, Mr. Uh, Mr. Cohen. I apologize for bringing this up and extending the, the meeting, but, um, you know, it, this, this kind of came up uh, with the uh, uh, wellness center where we had some memos from folks, and... Back in July, when this whole COVID uh, issue started, you know, the, the, we were just getting started. The town council was just getting started with remote meetings and, you know, trying to figure things out. And at the time, um, you know, I asked uh, Chairman Laffin, who was sitting in for Cervoni, who had, had to leave, whether or not, you know, they were making plans to have a, a hybrid meeting, 
meeting, we're here, and the public can, um, you know, use use their laptop to to dial in. You know, video conference. It's, it's been done for years, and Mr. Laffin said, "Yeah, we're looking at that." <clears throat> um, I haven't heard anything back, and and certainly, I haven't seen anything um, that uh, has you know, made any progress or allowed that. And I, the, the reason I bring it up, because somebody, you know, sent us a memo on comments for, for again, the Wellness Center and basically spelled that out. And, and I certainly agree with that. Um, there are people who don't want to come in, you know, even though we're social distance, we got the mask on, the hand sanitizer. I respect that. And, you know, with, without this capability, we're really disenfranchising people from, from making the comments. So um, I guess what I'm gonna do is go to the next town council meeting and get a status, but you know, it might be nice to get a, you know, official notice from, from us as a commission if we're so inclined. I, I, I do think it's important. It, it can be done pretty simply. And you know, again, I don't know how many people stayed home tonight because of, uh, you know, the, the conditions. I, I appreciate that. Uh, certainly, I think that's something to worth, uh, worth looking into. But I, I will say, as far as disenfranchising people, uh, certainly people are, are free to, you know, write correspondence yeah, to us. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I can't speak for all commission members, but I believe I can. But I believe all commission members, you know, read the correspondence that, that come to us and you know and evaluate that. So oh, yeah. Yeah. So I, I, I think don't disagree. You know, clear, yeah, there clearly is that opportunity. But I do agree in you know in, in, in for to have someone in person or, or to have real time, I think there's clearly a benefit to uh, to that. But so I would certainly support what you plan on doing. With that, there's no more comments. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Chairman, I move we adjourn. We have a second. Second. Second by Mr. Cohan. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? We're adjourned. Have a good evening. Thank you.